The order of reason spreads its wings and the world burns. We tell ourselves this is for enlightenment. We tell ourselves this is for the greater good. We tell ourselves this is for humanity. We lie to ourselves. The great engines of the empire are all consuming beasts, heedless of anything but their own hunger. For riches, for lives, for land. Everything falls before their advance. Nations are ground to dust. Histories torn apart and set aflame. Treasures seized and secrets plundered. We will chain the world and all its magical wonders. Who will stop us? Welcome to Skill and Malink, a tale about Mage the Ascension in the Victorian Age. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week. For lovers of Onyx Path products and fans of Mage the Ascension, come experience our Chronicle White Walls every Sunday at 9 p.m. on our Twitch channel. Link appearing shortly. If it's the dark and scary that calls to you, we have Trinity Continuum Aberrant on Saturdays, and if it's fantasy you crave, we play Scarlet's on Friday. Be sure to check out our website, warpletales.com, to see our complete calendar, including all of our other games and other systems, see recaps of shows, and get the links to our past archives. You will also find links to all our social media there and our Patreon. Be sure to click follow on Twitch so you can get notified of shows, and if you check out the YouTube archive, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, it's Warple Tales Anniversary Week. We're a very baby one-year-old show. Yay! So, Onyx... So, Onyx Path is helping us give away free stuff. Follow us on our channel at twitch.tv slash Tales. Follow Onyx Path here and be active in any of the chats on any day that we play this week for a chance to win prizes. Three prizes. Grand prize winner gets a Scion 2E bundle, and the two runner-ups will get a Story Path core book of their choice. Everyone loves free stuff. Winners will be drawn on Friday during Scarred Lands on the Vorpal Tales channel between 9 and 12 Eastern Time. Also, Victorian Mage is still on Indiegogo. It just passed probably the most important stretch goal, at least for some cast members of this show, and it's powering its way towards the next one. Links will appear momentarily. Check it out. It's an awesome supplement. Special thanks to Onyx Path Publishing and White Wolf for gifting us the World of Darkness and all the support they offer us. Thanks to Astral Tabletop for the awesome virtual space we use. And to Nate Mid from right here at Vorpal Tales for our Mage 20th Anniversary Edition character sheets that you can use too if you play Mage on Astral Tabletop. Awakened Extraordinary Gentle Beings, tell us who you are as well as the name of your character in this tale. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me still on fires pretty much everywhere. And in this game, I am playing Maisie Westernraw, the Verbena Mage. I said my stuff. I don't know who's next. Oh, I was looking for the list. Anyway, hey, I'm at Space Lord PJs. Uh, I will be playing Murdoch Jones, the lightning in a backpack mage. Valid. Hey, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever. And tonight I will be playing Ethan, who is not a mage. However, he's a birdie bird. I mean, uh, he's a he's a Corvus uh, shapeshifter. That's yeah, I'm professional. Hello, everybody. I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and tonight I am playing Arthur Westenra, the Chakravanti mage, who hopefully gets to fight something and do cool combat stuff. Maybe I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And tonight I will be playing Joffrey Wellington, the mathematical mage. And I am Dwayne, known across the Cabbage Patches as Made of Kimchi. Uh, tonight I will be playing Order of Hermes mage, Dr. Otto Lyle. Plus one XP for your intro, Dwayne. <laughs> Ever, if you would, please wow. read the recap from last session. I I will. Let me uh, tamp down the fact that Dwayne utterly broke me with that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> we open by preparing to visit Bedlam. 
Maisie packs a valise with girthy black candles, crystal ball, and other accoutrements useful for a seance. Dr. Westenra uh, utilizes his own magic to extend his consciousness into Bedlam. He focuses his awareness on an elaborate spinning wheel, using the visualization of the spinning wheel out into the world to carry his awareness forward. The ritual only takes about half an hour, but does grant him an awareness of Bedlam's layout and general floor plan. A special note is the strange area of more than expected unhappiness, including disgust, shock, and a strange sense of resignation. We briefly discuss what Dr. Weston picked up, the strange emotions he experienced. After a little more preparation, the mages make their way into Bedlam. Maisie, peering out of the carriage windows, learns that it's getting near the time of the year when families put carved gourds out on their porches. Meanwhile, Maisie and Arthur discuss Lucy's demise, attempting to convince the skeptical Joffrey Wellington that Homus Nocturnus is indeed a creature. The traveling companions settle into a dining car for the short trip to Bedlam. Maisie or orders herself a glass of French absinthe, Week, while Dr. Lyle takes a brandy, Joffrey a coffee, and Dr. Westenra a whale's whiskey. Arthur describes to Lyle what sort of signs he ought to look for to determine a vampire attack. We notice a fairly loud group of travelers, who seem to be loudly celebrating something. Maisie notices an elegant, well-dressed couple drinking something elegant. Maisie doesn't know why her attention is drawn to them, but they are fascinating to her. She notices that while the gentleman is smoking a cigar and the woman is taking some lower-class la laudanum? Is that how you pronounce that? Laudanum. <laughs> laudanum. Okay, thank you. They seem to be pretending to drink. Maisie peers at the auras of the two travelers. The man's aura is expected, but she picks up that the woman's aura is rather powerful and she reads a strange black symbol in the swirling colors of the aura. Meanwhile, Arthur Westenra convinces the entire train to toast to the queen's health. To the queen. He notices that the gentleman is a beat or two too slow to swallow. He's aggressively friendly and seems to succeed only in chasing them away. The gentlemen pick up that the couple have done something just not what. But Maisie hears a thought in her head. Lucy misses you. This upsets Maisie, who almost goes after the couple, but decides instead to inform her companions. A wise choice. Arthur bribes a servant to tell him where the strange couple are staying, but the servant is confused. But what people? Arthur... Feeling he's being played for a fool, gets angry. Lyle and Maisie calm him down. Based on whispers from the other travelers, it seems that only we could see them. Or perhaps remember them? Maisie asks if the symbol she witnessed means anything to any of the other travelers. Sadly, the answer is no. Joffrey manages to obtain the drinks left behind by the mysterious couple which he uses his magic on to form a mystical connection. He learns that the couple has somehow left the train. While it was in motion? The calculations indicate a future meeting, however. We arrive at our destination. Bedlam awaits. Upon arriving at Bedlam, Maisie collaborates with Joffrey to send a telegram back to the Western Ra home, asking if Ethan might be able to help after all. We may need some assistance. It's a good thing that Ethan can shift into a raven. Arthur Westenra is greeted by one of the leading doctors who brings Arthur to the survivor of the night attack, a young woman named Sophie Rensmith. She's extremely high on opium and varnish, but Arthur tries to communicate with her. Maisie wants to try and purge Sophie's system and sober her up. Lyle distracts the orderly to give Maisie the freedom to work. They end up sharing a drink of that good old whale's whiskey. Maisie enchants chamomile tea to calm Sophie and remove her intoxication. It works, but maybe a little too well. 
As Maisie continues to nurse Sophie, she bolts out of bed and pins Joffrey to the wall, saying she likes how he smells. She identifies Arthur as Lucy's father and mocks them in Lucy's voice. Maisie slaps her but fails to even leave a mark. Something else happens. A golden glint leaves Sophie's eyes and she seems to come back to herself. Arthur identifies some style of correspondence and mind magic was used on her. Not quite sphere magic, but that's the flavor he identifies. Tasty. Arthur, Maisie, and Lyle work together to figure out what is transforming Sophie. Lyle, the member of the Order of Hermes, correctly identifies blood sorcery, which as a hermetic, he has some very definitive ideas on. Arthur responds with his own blood magic and entropy sphere to try and break the connection between Sophie and the strange vampire enslaving her. Arthur's casting takes eight minutes, during which Sophie seems to be magically capable of casting some kind of chaos. But his spell works and Sophie collapses to the floor. Just as she collapses, Ethan in raven form arrives. Macy figures out a way to let him in the room, where he promptly pecks at Joffrey's shoes. Ethan transforms into a human, and Macy explains what's been going on. Now that Sophie has been mostly restored to herself, Dr. Lyle can question her. She seems to be crushing on him a bit as she answers. Sophie tells a tale of a celebration gone bad, a wrong turn into a strange neighborhood. They were attacked by vagabonds and fled, taking shelter in a sewer entryway. They hear sounds of someone in distress and investigate, only to come across what appears to be a nest of living gargoyles, along with men and women. They tore Sophie's friends apart, but another woman intervened to save Sophie. The woman did, in fact, have hair as red as strawberries. Dr. Lyle further identifies a wound on Sophie's neck puncture wounds which healed when licked clean. Maisie finds such an idea inherently offensive. Why didn't whatever preyed on Lucy not heal her? We determine that Sophie is in the process of transformation, but its outcome is not set in stone. We have a chance to save her. Lyle in particular knows a ritual which might cleanse her. Ethan might also be able to help. The team determines how to save her. Lyle puts Sophie back under. The rest of the mages must convince the hospital administrator to let them take Sophie back to their house. While Dr. Lyle can't seem to be persuasive enough, Arthur swoops in using his knowledge of the law, and the session ends with us being able to remove Sophie from Bedlam to the Western Room. When the scene opens, you will be standing uh, outside of Bedlam, waiting on your carriage to pick you up and take you back to the train. The young lady has been sedated. Which means the strongest amongst you would be carrying the young lady, and I feel like that's probably Ethan. Just out of curiosity, how many dots in strength do you have, Mr. Ethan? You would ask, wouldn't you? Uh, three dots. Okay. More than me. While I have equal amount of dots, I do think that carrying a body is definitely a job for our American friend. So while my also, you're off, old. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not dignified <laughs> to carry a lady through the city like this. I am honored to take her off your hands, your eldership. <laughs> Any thoughts, commentary, or interactions you wish to have before the train? If so, now's your chance. Um, With each other, I mean, not the GM. I, I must <laughs> apologize for my inability to speak with the uh, administrator earlier. I think I might have drank too much while running interference earlier. Dr. Lyle, though, you did an excellent job. You communicated in a confusing manner 
things in which the man did not understand, therefore creating the perfect distraction. You were unclear. Yes. Using. I was unclear even for myself. <laughs> did you not hear me, sir? <laughs> I'm trying to. I should be in this place. <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to make you feel better, Doctor. The job was done, though. For that, I applaud you. So now that we we do have the dear Sophie, where where are we going to take her? I assume back to your estate. Back to the manor, hopefully. Yes. Um. Oh, jeez. I. Mm-hmm. Quincy. Yes, back to Quincy. Quincy should still be at the manor. Oh, I, Wait. Thought, I thought you were trying to remember his name again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, because Quincy... No, no, but thank you, because I would not have remembered. Uh, Quincy took us to the train station, but then he probably took the wagon back home, I assume, correct? Correct. Okay. You would normally take a uh, lorry home. I assume with the resources for, I can secure us a private trip all the way home, correct? You can buy a uh, sleeping car on the train, yes. Okay. You can't okay. take a uh, carriage home. That would take that would take days. A oh, day. Oh, a oh, day. is that long? Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I would like to throw yeah. around some of my money this time, and I want to... I mean, resources four. I'm goddamn rich, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so I get to the um, before we get on the. Uh, uh, I want to talk to the ticket guy. Um, so if anyone wants to do anything before that, go ahead. Well, are we not going to talk about what may have happened in the asylum on the other side? I know that our primary goal was to secure young Sophie, but I feel that we glanced over. The doctor, I'll remind the rest of the group, was outside running interference when that scene happened, so Duane's character would have no idea you were all aware that was Sophie that did that. Yeah, uh, about that, I, I... I do think that our sweet little miss right here in, in my arms uh, had quite a bit to do with the uh, to-do. Oh, fascinating. And as soon as she calmed down, just everything else did. And we believe that this is due to her connection. Right. Second reminder, you specifically saw her lean into the wall, whisper in a language you couldn't understand, and you could feel waves of madness coming off of her, some kind of supernatural power. That too. (laughs) You could tell that she was spreading her madness through the hospital somehow, projecting Mm. it. She's uh, quite fond of Sharon, if you catch him adrift. So yes, it does seem, Doctor, that this is some sort of ability or influence gained through the connection, which currently, through a combination of severing the connection and sedation, hopefully, she no longer has the ability to. Although, although, I do wish to point out that the commotion that I felt when I did my preliminary scan of the facility did in fact have that happening while she was still under sedation. Hmm. So we must be on our top tier. Tip top. I'm remembering that correct, right, Tyler? She, we did not... It wasn't until we did the life magic that we cleared her of her sedation, but when I did the mind scan, I could sense that the wing was at a heightened wildness. You had a critical success, so you basically learned it's two out of three stages, yes. Okay. So she can still okay, so yeah. So she can still do this while in a sedation, but it seems as though she cannot reach maximum 
wildness. <laughs> what would be needed to prevent uh, any of this? Any use of this power? I would imagine that a suitable mind blockage, which I of, of which I have tools for. No, 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 no. Uh, I believe that this might be more suited for someone such as myself, Doctor. If that's all the same to you. Oh. What is your what is your idea, sir? To create a blockage without the requirement of needles or any tools of that sort. Just a, just a simple usage of a pocket watch. Uh, <laughs> the doctor is just like, just some... said, what now? <laughs> Without needles? Without the instruments? The only instrument we'll need is this. Sure, you. Time is not a factor in this, sir. No, no, no. Very well, yeah. No, let's... We, we have brought... <laughs> I mean, by all means, if you'd like to, I I won't stop you, but I, Mr. Jo- I feel there jo- are less messy ways of going about this. Mr. Joffrey, I, I... he's been brought for a reason. Allow him to do his work. Mr. Joffrey, please. Oh, uh, Lazy, you were saying, I'm sorry. Oh, no, just that uh, I agree that we should try with the less invasive method first. I just, I fail to understand how you are going to stop this with a mere pocket watch. Well, so do I, but I'm also confident that he knows something of what he's doing. Well, then, by all means. Thank you. I enjoy Wait, being you, a student. Are you suggesting you're going to take the pocket watch and cut her open? Well, no, 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 no. Are you going to hit Real. her over the head with it? No, that... Real... I, I suspect wild. they should probably just observe him, and all questions will be answered. <laughs> quiet, quiet. I'm giggly today. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Jeffrey would take the pocket watch and start swinging it with one hand, as he takes a, a pencil. And starts writing out just quick calculations. Just make sure that he's got the pendulum swinging just right to distract her. As he casts a mind spell to try and do a, like a reverse mind shield around her mind. Using mind three. Okay. Did not have the card open. But I do now. So yes. Uh, you have anything in correspondence? Uh, I have two correspondents. Okay. <clears throat> that will actually make this a little easier. So let me rack this up for you, and I will tell you what to roll. Your primary sphere is time. Yes. Are you spending quintessence on this? Ah, seems I must. Oh. Hmm. Sh- you don't have to, but it does make it easier. Hmm. Quintessence, uh, every point you spend, which you can spend up to your avatar in points, will reduce the difficulty by one. So if you want, you can wait and answer that when you hear the difficulty. Mm. What, what is the difficulty? Are you going to take train? your time during the train ride home, or are you just going to do it at a normal pace? At a normal pace. Try and get this done as quickly as possible so nothing goes terribly wrong. What's your Arate? Four. Is it three or four? Four. Your difficulty is five. One below average. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah. So this will be okay, fine. Well, your Arate, you need you need five successes. Yeah. You get four tries. First roll, three successes. Good start. Second roll, one success. And the last roll is three successes. Nice. So, what was the total number of successes? The 
total is six. And you needed four. So you exceed you exceeded what you needed by two. So mark down for your notes because I will undoubtedly forget if something dramatic were to happen for no reason. Uh, that uh, that would create a resistance rating of five. Basically five counter magic dice if the sire were to try to force the, the nascent ghoul to obey its whims. All right. With uh, three rolls to complete that, or was it two rolls or three? It was three. With three rolls to complete that, that would have taken about 45 minutes. Cool. Takes about Spend. 30 minutes to get the train rolling once you're settled in, so the train's only been moving for about 15 minutes. For the reference of the rest of you, did you do anything special during that time? Yes. Which was? <clears throat> now, Mr. Um, how many people are in a sleeping uh, car? Uh, normally two, but I assume you're all sitting in one at the moment because you want to be together. Okay. Like you could there, there's, enough, two. there's enough room for all of us to, to, to hang out in this car. Maybe a little cramped, but yeah. not like terribly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah, they fold up into couches. You could fit six people in here. <clears throat> Sir. Um, yes, hello. Um, I will be needing uh, one private sleeping car, please. I will also be needing the adjacent sleeping car as well as the other, the opposite adjacent sleeping car, please. You're buying the whole train? <laughs> British eyebrow raised the opposite adjacent, sir? <clears throat> Do you mean you want the one across and the one next to you? I would like three consecutive private cars. Yes, sir. So yeah, I would like to buy out the one that we're going to hang out in and the one on either end of us so that we can completely block off anyone from even being close to us. So we'll have two buffer cars. And with resource four, okay. if, if they happen to be filled, I just keep putting coins down until... <laughs> yes, sir, those just became available. <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Sorry, sir. Uh, the train Those is not taken. full. Okay. The train is not full. Although, since it's clear you're expressing willingness to pay extra when you're like, make sure, extra couple pounds, that we get this, right? He picks up on the fact that you're trying to be generous. Mm -hmm. I'll absolutely take care of you, sir. It doesn't say a word to you at all until you're settled in and you realize you're the only rented sleeping cars in this car cabins in this car <laughs> we're the only one the cabin, can... the cabin was empty anyways <laughs> no, no that's fine but he doesn't I... care he got a juicy tip yeah no I, I i you know we yeah we would still want those regardless if someone else came in we wouldn't want a late book yes you know all that good stuff so uh would it be possible so i imagine like that there are cars in front of our three and cars behind our three uh, there are six sleepers to a car because mm -hmm. they're roomier in this time period. Uh, and there's, yeah, I can put you in the middle if that's what you want. There are four sleeper cars. So there's 24 cabins. Yeah. So mostly I just want to uh, figure out, is there a way that I can set up wards so I can tell if people are entering the dummy cabins? Uh, so, because it's a train, there's only one hallway. You don't even need to do anything to the dummy cabins unless you think they're going to come in through the windows. Uh, they'd have to pass through the main corridor down the middle. Okay, and we'd be able to hear that pretty easy? You could set a ward on the main corridor if you want. Yeah, I, I think yeah, the wards are a really good idea. I think so. it's worth, worth being a little paranoid right now. I think so, too. Also, you um, mentioned... You mentioned uh, windows. 
would I think that Homo Nocturnus yeah. can turn into bats? Uh, you don't have any reference of that because that hasn't happened in front of you yet. Okay. <laughs> and none of the fiction that portrays that has been written yet. However, you could roll uh, the cult and see what you get, plus intelligence. Okay. Set it to set it to difficulty eight. See if any of your coven sisters have ever mentioned such a thing. Okay. Uh, nope. I rolled an eight and a one. Okay. You may have heard that they can control animals, but not that they can become them. Okay. I I feel like that's enough for me to put up warts on the windows, though. Okay. Yeah. What kind of ward would you like to put up? Uh, well, I have life three, so I would just, uh, life three and correspondence two, and I would like to know when anything with a heartbeat crosses the ward. Okay, go ahead and roll your arity against difficulty four. That's very basic. Do vampires have heartbeats? I was about to ask, do they? Uh, Good question. Do I adjust? Dif oh, there we go. Difficulty four. Mm, it will not let me adjust the difficulty manually. I will just roll my meat space dice. Meat space. <laughs> uh, they get shortened to meat dice. Uh, that would be two successes. Ward is in place. Do it again for the window. This is windows. Okay. One roll for all eight windows. Goodness. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a ten. Uh, that is five successes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. What Second about window. Ethan and... Uh, what about Ethan, Sir Arthur, and the Good Doctor? Well, I would like to... Oh, no, you um, only had to roll once for all eight windows. Sorry, Rachel. Oh, okay. So that was a really good <laughs> Wasn't roll. that mean? That was a really good roll. I got two tens on that one. Save it for your next roll. I'll let you keep it. Sorry, oh, Ethan, go ahead. I just pushed all my dice together. Um, I would definitely like to... physically survey it, considering I'm the the, the fist, the feathery fist. Um, the corridor can only fit two, two small or one large person. You'd have to, like, turn sideways to get out of the way. Whereas, like, uh, the way I picture uh, Joffrey, he could probably go side by side with the good doctor because I imagine they're the driven type who don't get a lot of meals and probably like five foot six for the era probably weigh like a stone okay. but you no <laughs> two of you aren't walking side by side or two Arthurs are not either okay and then all well, the doors are closed on the other cabins Right. Um, when the train is full and about to leave is when I'd like to use enemy ways, which is a danger sense. Um, it's a perception and stealth roll. I can pick up hints as to the nature of enemies in the area. Uh, there aren't any right now, but that might come oh, okay. in handy in a minute. And then... You are alone in this entire car at the moment. Okay, well, well, I kind of figured that. But then there's another skill. I don't know if I want to use it or not. Because... Where's the catch on this? So, okay, so I'll read this. Uh, it's called Carrion's Call. Um, Korax still feed on and are intimately linked to death and the dead. 
Furthermore, the Koraks have a nigh sacred duty relating to the corpses of the slain that demands that Raven's children be able to find the freshly slaughtered. This gift tells the Koraks when a fresh corpse is nearby and inexorably leads the were raven to the site where the body rests. This has its up and downs. Clever Fomar are more than happy to murder innocents to attract the attention of Koraks with this gift. After all, once Carrion's call has been issued, the Koraks has no choice but to eventually somehow respond. So, basically... In, in this particular instance, the catch is freshly dead. Freshly dead, okay. So, a powerful vampires... Homo Nocturnus has, not, has been dead for a long time. Okay. Newly turned, however, that would be very handy. So, I'm wondering if I should bother or not bother for now. No. Okay. Whether or not there are any vampires in the scene about to happen, if there were, you wouldn't detect them with that because they're not fresh. Ew, they're stale. <laughs> okay, thank you. So then, yeah, just physical yep. surveying and Save physical... your gnosis, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's all for me. Sir Arthur and the good doctor. Go ahead, Sir Arthur. Honestly, I think other than just securing the rooms, I'm just sitting and relaxing as a gentleman does. Enjoying a cigar, I'm sure. Maybe. Although, I'm not going to lie, I was hoping to actually buy out the entire car. Like, not the cabins, all three cars. So... <laughs> There are no, there's nobody renting sleeper cars on this particular ride anywhere. Okay. So yes, all right. they're all effectively empty either way. Okay, cool. That's not. How what's not occurring to Sir Arthur is that's suspicious in the suspicious other opposite Suspicious in the way. opposite direction. Yes. It's occurring to me, but I'm saying, <laughs> but to me, Arthur, yes. Um, I got what I wanted. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, can Arthur put that together as being suspicious? Uh, you can roll Enigmas plus Wits, difficulty 8. Enigmas and Wits. Does it have to be Enigmas? 7, not 8. 8's too high. Yeah, I gotta figure yes, out that puzzle. Yes, because that would be solving a puzzle. Yep. Yeah, but I don't have Enigmas, so I want it to be something else. <laughs> Difficulty seven, you say? Yep. One success. One success. Seems sus. Can't figure out why. <laughs> okay. Then in that case, I will go to... Maisie's busy right now. She's doing all the warding. Ethan's busy. Lacey's busy. He, uh, Joffrey's busy. The doctor is not. So I'll I'm walk not. up. I'll walk up to Lyle... Um, <clears throat> Doctor, yeah. I am about to sit for the evening with the evening paper and nice pipe, but I do wish to point out that while the procurement of these particular three travel cars are to our advantage, so that we can more properly maintain a defensive perimeter, I do wish to point out I'm uneasy in the fact that not one of these rooms were booked before we arrived. Does that mean anything to you? Have you ever heard of a, of a train with no passengers? Roll yours. Same roll, Doc. Uh, enigmas and what? Wits. Wits. You should be good at this. Three. Six. Okay. It's uh, yep, seven. Is good. Yep. There you go. That's the number of dice I need. Uh, one, two, three, four successes. Yeah, boy. And immediately, you were immediately like, did you ask them if someone else had already rented out the cars? And Sir Arthur is like, no. And so you're like, you ring the bell, and the guy shows up, and you're like, these were all already rented, weren't they? And he's like, yes, I took two people's money. But I don't care, the transaction's complete. Hmm. <laughs> and you're like, who rented them out? And he says, the most lovely redhead. And you're like, 
<laughs> was it the color of strawberries? Case. Similar, yes. Sir Arthur, it seems that we have uh, company on this train. I'm standing with him when this happens, right? Yes. yes. Is okay. she on the is she on the train now? No, she left. Do you expect her to be returning before the train departs? This is like the train's gone. We're, we're in motion. Okay. Well, I, I know you had said yeah. some of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May I ask um, what room she was in? She wasn't in a room. Her and her, uh, she, she, uh, rented out a whole passenger car too. We had all our discussions in the passenger car. Which one specifically did she reside in? He gives you the number. I trust you'll be busy for the next hour. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I could get drunk. Goodbye. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> be sure to toast to the queen when you do. Cheers. He disappears. Dr. Lyle, do you fancy a walk? I do fancy a walk. However, my mind tells me that I should not walk as I am. I think oh, I might change. Ah. Oh. Did you bring adventuring gear clothes? Yes. Hmm. Yes, I did. Okay. I, I myself left my... Let me take off my f flimsy pants. <laughs> yeah. Put on. <laughs> put on my tight pants. <laughs> put on my tight walking pants. <laughs> yeah. These and this pants shirt made for walking. has a big V-neck and shows off my abs. That's a, that's a deep V-neck down to the abs. <laughs> <laughs> Would it's you say it was a... A deep reverse V-neck? <laughs> <laughs> It's just a V fabric. <laughs> it's no other shirt. <laughs> no, Doctor okay. Doctor Lyle feels that he should not walk as himself, but perhaps another. Oh, you're gonna try to shape shift. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Why I've already said. not? What an answer. Just in case they're what still on like the train. What would you like to shapeshift into? Not, a, not, a, not anything hard. I'm, I'm going for just appearance change. So Male or female doesn't matter, but appearance. I'm not trying to change myself to into a pig or anything. But I need to know... And most of us in the cast lean forward to hear the answer. Does your method of shape changing involve a scalpel on yourself? Uh, yes. However, Does your face oh, not how you think off. I'm disappointed. No. Then go ahead and tell no. us how the spell looks when you do it. No. So I will. I will go into a room by myself, and as I open my shirt. You see that I have many, many scars all over my chest. I will take that scalpel, start to draw sigils into my flesh. Different words, the Order of Hermes. And as I complete the incantation on my body, it moves like worms up towards the face, reconstructing the bones. You hear, you hear a cracking outside the door if it works <laughs> if anybody well, knocks hear cracking either way <laughs> if anybody knocks just a minute <laughs> wow surprisingly simple for you yeah difficulty is five 
you are going to need five successes, and I'm going to need you to mark two points of straights. <laughs> Yay. Before you start. Uh, For those new to the show, straights is paradox in Victorian age. Yeah, you want to avoid the straights. Eh. Alright, straights two. You get five rolls. Begin. Oh, wait. Straights is just paradox, right? Yes. Oh, I don't know what to do with that. On the character sheet, you have two points of paradox automatically. Okay. And if you botch, it becomes four. Oh. Okay. What am I rolling? Air attack? Yep. Difficulty five, five tries. There is one, two, three successes. No ones. And <laughs> is it difficulty five? Yep. Four, five, six, and a ten is seven. And a one. So seven successes. Okay. On on two you rolls. You successfully transform, but the bonus dice doesn't really do anything except it could give you a longer duration if you want it. The extra successes. They don't make it better. They just make it last longer in this case because there's nothing to enhance. Nope. So you can have will... two scenes oh. instead of one. Aha. And since you did that in two rolls, it only takes a half hour, so the other spellcasters are still doing their thing. Which means you have time for the two of you to walk to the other car. Yes, so when I open the door, I walk out with pipe in hand and a derby hat that you didn't see me have. I have a, a full beard, like nice and bushy. Well, that's an improvement. <clears throat> um, my eyes are a bit sunken in a little bit. You don't look anything like yourself, right? No. Mm -mm. So... I look like that guy that you used to see down at the wharf. Okay. Excuse me, sir. This is a private train car. I don't appreciate that you are trespassing at this point, and I'm going to ask you to leave kindly. It, it's me. Exact same voice, because he didn't specify he changed his voice. Yeah, <laughs> it's me. This is awkward. Uh, does Macy <laughs> overhear that? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so Maisie's probably like with uh, some herbal incense and like using uh, her ceremonial athame to like put the wards up and like, I'm better mage than that, Dad! Give me some credit! I would have known if someone came in. So, shall we Fair take point. that walk? <laughs> Doesn't fair to have a point. You head through the car. You pass through oh, the other empty we, sleeping car because you're in the Hold middle. on. Because you're you, we specifically tell everyone on the car what we know and where we're going. Still not going to change We're all anything, busy. Steve. We do not wish <laughs> to inter... We are not... We are, you are all busy. We do not wish to interrupt or deviate you from your plans. However, me and the fine doctor will be taking an evening stroll to car number this number not provided at this time <laughs> in order to further investigate the fact that the strawberry haired woman seems to have occupied said car earlier in the day if you do not return within the next drinking hour as that is how long the porter has given us please come to our rescue thank you um What's a, what's a drinking hour? Because... I don't have time to explain this to an American. Carry on, Doctor! But I drink every hour. Charming. You go through the other empty car. You go through the first passenger car. There's maybe five or six people in there. You get to the passenger car that the, the dude told you the lady was in. It's empty. But there is evidence that there was someone in every single seat recently. And I don't need to be me because you split the party for me. Murdoch! He's like hanging out with uh, comes out of a drunken haze with Quincy and just like, crikey, 
Where the hell did everyone go? <laughs> now, they left you on purpose because you and Ethan were supposed to hold down the fort with uh, uh, Arthur's manservant. Quincy. The very large, <laughs> very large, beefy, but yet well-mattered and ninja-like British guy that works for him. He's still going to wake out of a drunken haze and still say that. He expects everyone back already, but... They, they've been gone like six hours, but you don't expect them back for another three. <clears throat> He's alone in the house. No. The manservant's there. Quincy's it was him cleaning person. up, like... Right, I get that, but... He w- Quincy's an NPC that's gonna die real soon. That's unfortunate. People, people, people use formal <laughs> terms, and he's supposed to be invisible. That's his job. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> that's why you sat up going what's happening because it took away the empty whale's whiskey bottle and replaced it with a full one <clears throat> you didn't hear it you just sensed the change nice someone's touching my whiskey <laughs> gotta have that whiskey made from real whales <laughs> and you're gotta thinking to yourself <laughs> and <laughs> for you there's no setup necessary but you're thinking to yourself huh it's been a really boring, quiet night. That's when the front door gets kicked open. I'm going to need you all to roll initiative. You said all? Like all of us? All. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you you specifically had a vision you looked up to saying you would somehow simultaneously see them at your house and on the train later. I don't like it. Oh, what? We're all <laughs> going to die. I don't remember said vision. Mm. I, it was my vision. Do I have to click anything was, for initiative, was, or should, double should arrows I do it down. Uh, double arrows double down. Double arrows down, but initiative is a uh, single d10 plus wits and dex. I rolled real shitty. I got an eight with a, with a one. Wow. E. So what was your total, Murdoch? Um, total eight. Uh, Joffrey. Six. Even better. Going to die. Terrible. What about Maisie? You're muted, Maisie. I apologize, Ted. Hey. What about Sir Arthur? Fifteen. Better. That's a good doctor. Twelve. Is that a biscuit? And what about Jeffrey? Ethan. (laughs) Well, a twelve. Ethan and the good. Ethan and the good doctor. What are your dexterities? Five. Five. (laughs) You have five dots and dex. I do. (laughs) Uh, three. In wits. You have to be very dexterous to cut people. That is a spry-ass doctor. I have to be dexterous to poke people's eyes out with my beak. <laughs> what is your wits, good doctor? Uh, three. Same. <laughs> Roll a d10, both of you. Highest goes first. Eight. Oh. Nine. Ethan <laughs> wins. Damn. So close. I would have died if we'd have both rolled the same number. That would have been great. It's it's fate. Okay. We have to go at the same time. <laughs> Gonna take a minute to so hold on. I would like to say something partially in character, partially out of character, if that makes sense. Sure. That Mr. Westenrush sure is fast for an old man. <laughs> That he Except is. you can't see him. Wait, I can't see him. They're in a, That's right, he went for a They're in a completely different part of the train. Good job, Steve. <laughs> Wait, Steve triple split the party. Yeah, he did. <laughs> what? Hold on. Shit ass. Technically, you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole cabal. 
<laughs> everyone, Technically. Everyone in this party is perfectly capable. Not me. No, I'm not capable. Oh, so since we have our own train car reserve, does that make us a cavalry car? I, I have to go. Cable. I have to go. Cable. Okay. I'm going to end this stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, want to, we just want to thank the Onyx Path for right. their time. It's like <laughs> we have to. We have to go. We must go now. <laughs> we love Ever and their terrible jokes. Thank you. One of those parts is true. Love the terrible jokes? <laughs> I'm gonna mute my mic now. It's for the best, y'all. Fast little bitches. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> no. no. They, are, they are fast little bitches, Steve. Fast ones. You're fighting hellhounds. Well, I rolled a nine on my initiative, so I couldn't do much better. And than you're I not did. first. This is unfortunate. You're second, though. Okay, oh, now it's going to get weird. Okay. It's going to get weird because I'm going to do the split scene in initiative order, so that we don't have to split the scene literally. But that makes sense. you're all going to declare what you want to do in reverse order. Slowest person declares first, because faster Ooh. people have time to react to what slower people are doing. Ooh, mm. I like this mechanic a lot. Okay. Which means, Joffrey, you tell us your plan first. When uh, both uh, ends of the train car, the doors are kicked open and a swarm of people floods into the hallway. Oh, oh dear. And like all of Maisie's alarms go off. All of them. Oh, do you, is it possible to see how many people just kicked open these doors? Or do I just know doors have been kicked open? You could... Uh, I'll give you that for free. Yeah, give me an alertness plus perception roll. Difficulty six. All right, alertness plus perception. All right, four dice. At difficulty of six. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Two successes. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. My initial plan was cast illusions on them to make myself invisible to their minds. That's not going to work here. It's too many people. I can feel it. Uh, so what Joffrey is going to do is try to cast a spell that allows him with time and correspondence to know exactly where to stand to dodge attacks. Like before they come, so maybe you that'll give bump yourself up a dodge defense. bonus. Okay. They have a dodge bonus, yes. And do. Murdoch, what are you going to do when it's your turn? Your door gets kicked open, and you also hear some windows shatter. Um, Many sounds of boots. You're nowhere near the front door, though. Oh. Okay. You're on the second floor in a sitting room. Huh. I'll give you the layout, because that'll help you figure out what you want to do. You're on the second floor in a sitting room. The second floor also has a library and some guest rooms and a balcony that overlooks the first floor and then a grand staircase. The first floor has the foyer and uh, other sitting rooms, kitchen, the dining room. He, the facilities are in the back of the building. He's got a utter bloody typical. Drink a fourth okay. of the bottle that he has. Walk to the stairs <laughs> chuck the rest and smash it on the stairs and then fire his gun use magic to have it ignite the the whiskey and then figure out shit from that point on so start a stair fire yeah. now I will point out that under normal world of darkness rules changing your action requires you to spend a willpower point but if the slow people's actions are wrecked by the faster people I won't do that okay for no reason I say that at this exact moment after Sean just, that's what he's going to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Maisie, what are you going to do when it's your turn? Oh. Uh, Maisie is going to do something a little bit like uh, the doctor, but she is going to use uh, her life and spirit 
uh, and entropy, if that matters. Uh, she wants to sense their patterns. Who who are these people? What are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? Hey. The people pouring into the train car are going to try their hardest to maul and or kill you with various weapons, including their hands, which some of them, the fingernails are elongating into hardened claws. That's that's fun. None of them have sharp teeth yet, though. Ethan, what are you going to do when it's your turn? Um... By the way, FYI, Maisie, I'll repeat again. All your wards went off. Your heartbeat wards. Mm-hmm. I'm not really... Hmm. Can I see who our enemies are? A rabble of very dangerous-looking people, some of which are supernatural. Because they're growing claws. Oh, they're growing... Uh, make a perception oh. plus alertness. Maybe since you're in the hallway and not peeking your head out like Joffrey was, you'll get more info. In other I words, like more successes. <laughs> Bear with me, my computer is less slow. Um, <clears throat> difficulty of... Six. Six? Okay. Yep. Two successes. Mm -hmm. One of them is hanging back in the opposite way of where Sir Arthur and the Doctor went, because they're coming in from two different cars. One of them hanging back, but it's not a strawberry-haired redhead. It's a blonde guy. It's a blonde guy who uh, hasn't bathed or showered in a while, you can tell from the frazzled beard and the messed up hair. Uh, his clothes are proper, but they're messed up. They're not in place like you would expect of a gentleman of the time. And there's a glint of madness in his eyes. And he has fangs. Oh, okay, Smiling then. at you with them. Well, I think this is... <clears throat> since I don't actually know their weakness, I'm not going to use it to my advantage. Because <laughs> player does. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> I'm gonna, you know, go tried and true cowboy and pull out my favorite. Get the shit out of some exactly. Hmm? Shoot some shit. That's what I'm gonna put here. Exactly. What about you, Doctor? Uh, question. Were we able to tell that the words had gone off, or is that something only Maisie knows? No, but people also flood into your car from both ends. Okay. Um, there are less of them. There are five. And one of the five also is smiling with sharpened teeth. Mm. This one is put together, though. Is also a gentleman. He's got his hair greased back. He's wearing action clothes like what everyone was teasing you about doing. He is not wearing a starch shirt. He's wearing, you know, his sleeves are rolled up. He came in ready for a fight. Um... This guy, though, mutters something under his breath, and the lightning bolt dances between his fingertips. Oh. I got this. Life and mind. The doctor cuts off the two halves of his mind from the left and right cortex. Therefore, leaving it's his... reading. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Therefore, leaving him unable to complete tasks. I don't know how much task that disables. So, if you successfully split your mind, you'll be able to take a physical and a mental action at the same time without splitting your dice pool. Wait, say that again? <laughs> Normally, if you do a mixed action, you want to dodge and cast a spell or dodge and shoot, you split the dice pool. So your attribute dice 
get split, but you get to keep your ability dice at the regular amount. So, like, if your strength was four and you wanted to punch and jump, you'd get strength two plus brawl and strength two plus uh, athletics. Okay. And if you do this, and the second action is purely mental, like some kind of spell that doesn't require your hand that you can figure out with your own practice and focus or make a calculation or figure out what's going on around you. Plus take a physical action, you wouldn't lose any dice or any pools. It's an important distinction. Mm. Okay. I know your characters don't know. But a lot of the audience and several of the players in this room do, so. The Tremiri Lieutenant is going to electrocute you. Tremere anti tribu And the Malkavian Lieutenant looks right into your eyes, Ethan, and whispers, See what I see. And you feel that thing that the girl did coming, only way more focused and coming right at you in the hospital. Cool packs in the house. Mm. Swarm Quincy. Don't do that. Oh. Because Quincy's downstairs. Now, Quincy's a super ninja. And it's not actually your turn yet, so there's no way you'd know this, Murdoch, but this is for dramatic effect. I'm going to let this happen. This is the first time you hear Quincy make noise. He shouts at the top of his lungs, Come at me, foul beasts of the night! And you hear the dramatic wolfing sound of canvas coming off something and squeaking wheels. And you look down over the banister. <laughs> this motherfucker is pushing out uh, from somewhere in the back of the house. Uh, he has pulled the canvas off and is pushing directly towards the front door where they're rushing him. A Gatling gun. Yeah! Cool. It's like a cannon with a crank that somehow Sir Arthur had in the back of the house. Yeah! <laughs> like you do. You realize when he fires that, your plan is going to be no good because he's going to blow the shit out of the stairs and everything in that room. Hmm. There won't be any stairs to set on fire in a minute. So what would you like to do instead? Um. So he's got them corralled at the door then? There's more coming in the back door. He's vulnerable from behind. Oh. There is a back staircase you could use to help him. Okay, then let's do that. And can I... I just want to chuck okay. whiskey and set it on fire. Like, that's what the... I mean, you could also jump out the window and come at them from the backyard. Oh, shit. Yeah, let's do that. Well, yes, because I want to be two for two, so let's jump out the window. Hey. Uh... Arthur, what are you going to do when it's your turn? You're only aware of what's happening in your cabin. Yeah, um, so uh, so I can see this guy doing the lightning thing in our, in my cabin, right? That's who has the lightning? Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Alright, so I can see him You don't feel any light. straights happening. <clears throat> oh, so there's no straights You can around? sense the straights at time. Okay. Alright, so <clears throat> um, There are no straights I... in the room. There are no straights in the room. Cool. So we're going to have a good time. We, we broke ever. <laughs> They're going to have to change that word. That's No, no, no. Perfect. Oh, it's perfect. Never. <clears throat> All right. It's never change it. So I want to look around and I'm sure everything in this card is like brass or like copper or there's, there's like stuff in here, right? Especially this was a private, this was still part of the private car. They might even have, like, a tiny... No, list. this is a passenger car. But, I mean, the seats are made out of metal. Okay. The seats are made out of metal. They're upholstered metal, like a train car seat would be, yeah. Uh, with wood. Metal frame, okay. wood, wood board. I want to use, I want to use Entropy to control the arc of the lightning bolt, to control the pattern in which the electricity ultimately passes through. And whether there's like a current or a metal thing that attracts the lightning, something like that, right? Something that controls the pattern that the lightning is gonna eventually come through. I want it to hit a piece of metal and basically 
back towards him. I want to reverse this lightning bolt back at him using entropy. Controlling how that bolt <laughs> That's a cool idea, out. but I should warn you that it's going to be uh, contested, so it's not going to be a normal roll. That's fine. Let's do some weird <clears throat> shit. I agree. There's no straights around. Let's do weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're not gonna do. Uh. Uh. Uh, he's not close enough to do that yet. What's he gonna do? Oh, the other Tremere that's at the house. Oh, there's two of them. Not close enough to do that yet. Just expel the armament, and, and then their that. teeth will fall out. Someone forgot to spray for Tremere. <clears throat> you hear uh, <laughs> the sound. You know that sound trees make in a heavy storm? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you hear that. From the you hear that Florida, coming man. from the frame and wheels of the Gatling gun. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Somebody's using foul sorcery to, to deform the gun and the wood in the gun. Hmm. Oh. He goes first. That motherfucker. And successfully damages the gun. It's not out of action, but it's not accurate at all now. Yes, was, because, it, was it ever? Because uh, 19th century <laughs> Gatling guns were known for their accuracy. <laughs> Arthur, I'm going to need you to roll Arate. Arate, that's... Plus forces. Arate Difficulty. plus... Forces. So you're using entropy for the effect, but resting control requires you to have more understanding of what he's doing than him, or equal to. Uh, I don't have any dots and forces. Well, then you're screwed. I know. <laughs> That's why I said your idea is really cool, even if you fail. I strongly approve. Okay. I mean, I'm tried in this game. Difficulty was what? Seven? Six. Six? Just base uh, difficulty? Okay. Yeah, that's, a goddamn, that's a goddamn good roll. Um, I got a perfect roll, which means I got a four. Um, oh. You know, I did the best <clears throat> I so, could. Yeah. Uh, I it's got gonna eight, sort of I, work the way you wait, wanted? hold on, hold on. I should get a bonus for this, okay? Because I can do the camera if you want me to. I got an eight and six, six, six. I win. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would work in favor of the vampires. Hmm. No. <laughs> Therefore, your eight becomes a one. <laughs> no. So, uh, that's really close to tying him, which means I'm going to give you a little bit of a boost. You don't make it hit the wall, but you do make it not hit you. You're like, I can push it just a little to the left. Oh, shit. I'm Doctor, there. I'm going to gonna need you to dodge. Yeah. I knew that was coming. So, dodging. Uh, if you do decide to dodge, you're splitting your dice before you make your roll to not have to split your dice. So it's going to get weird, but we'll figure that out in a minute. <laughs> you're splitting your uh, dice to make your roll to not split your dice. Yes. You don't split Arate. You don't split Arate, but you are splitting your actions. So you're going to split your dodge dice. So dex plus athletics, but only half your dex round down. Oh, round Instead of five down. decks, you get two decks plus I athletics. Decks plus what S you have S to do is exceed his successes on the casting. You have to. So for every success you make, he loses one from his lightning bolts. You need at least five to get out of the way. You could only see how many dice I have in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see less than dice. five. It is less than five. <laughs> You can choose to not dodge. It's up to you. Well, no, I chose to dodge, and I didn't dodge well. I only got two. Okay. The lightning bolt hits you. I only have three dice. Are you wearing any non-metal armor by chance? <laughs> I'm not. I think that's a no. Yeah.
think the only thing metal that I have on me is my scalpel. Okay. No, I'm just like, did you have armor? Because you can soak, but because humans cannot soak lethal or aggravated damage without physical armor or magic. Lightning is lethal. Hmm. All right. <laughs> now let's ask the audience about your fate. <laughs> audience! A Tremere casting Wrath of Zeus holds 10 dice of potential electricity damage in their hand and they can split into multiple lightning bolts. So did he use all of his all to try to fr fr fry Sir Arthur or only half of his potential? First person to answer wins. Uh, Ember so Brad says half. It is? That was fast. I didn't even... Wow. He said... He said... All half. Oh. No, I'm sorry. He was talking about something else. Yeah, I was like... Travis was... says to kill you, <laughs> Duane. Classic age plays just said Thank you, all. Travis. Oh. His was the first. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Dang. So mean. 50... <sighs> Bring it on. Roll all the ones. I did not. <laughs> uh, they cry for blood. Are you not entertained? I, I love how divided our audience is. Two votes for all, two votes for half. <laughs> <laughs> we love so, you uh, too. Is, <laughs> is that all I'm worth to you, Travis? Is 100? <laughs> I need to see more. So, uh... <laughs> so, uh how much? One of the tens legit exploded four times. <sighs> but I'm not going to do that to you. I'm just going to give you the base damage. You're incapacitated. The lightning bolt hits you, flings you across the room, and removes all of your health boxes. You are unconscious and die. <laughs> how Someone save the only guy that can resurrect you. How unconscious and how dying? <clears throat> I Damn. am. He's exactly an incapacitated. I am He's incapacitated. Not dead. On, on lethal or aggravated? Lethal. Okay. That's all it takes for a mage. You're still humans. So I feel like I should instead rewind time so I can jump in front of the way. <laughs> I feel like that would be... You don't know what's happening. But I don't... Yeah, that's true. Or oh, else, no. yes, you could. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, else? Okay. We're going to let Quincy epically jump out the window before we go to break, and everyone sits in suspense for 10 minutes waiting to see what happens to the doctor. Quincy, athletics, plus dex. No, uh, strength, through the window. Glass is hard. All right. Um, strength and athletics, you said? That is... Yes. That is correct, Plastic Age plays, except that's a Tremere vampire, and they don't get the straights. Oh, he probably means the time change. Oh, shoot. Um, uh, that seems like it rolled weird. What happened? What'd you get? Result three. I don't know. Uh, you. Is that difficulty eight? And you got. Oh, three successes. Three okay. Successes. I'm reading that now. Got it. Okay, cool. Three successes. <clears throat> Please describe your cinematic dive through the window and how you land right behind the uh, <clears throat> Tremere vampire. Oh, um, cinematically. So he goes leaping out and does the whole like puts his arms and knees up and just like, and then does a flip and a twist and just land does like the the typical superhero landing and just stands up slowly and just kind of in disbelief that that actually happened. Just like, crikey. <clears throat> Excellent. And now we're going to take our mid-show break so everyone, everyone can wonder what's going to happen to the good doctor. I'm going to we'll die. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
And we have returned. Mm. Um, oh, I'm gonna die. Doctor, Dwayne is are you dead. okay? <laughs> As I'm just okay. laying there, <laughs> smoldering on the ground. Doctor, no time to lay about. Get up. Chop, chop. So, Quincy, would you like to split your action? Quincy. I know I didn't ask you that when you rolled to jump out the window, but I don't care. Wait. Would you like to split your action? Who's Does playing Quincy? Play? I I am apparently Quin. Yes, I would You're like not, to split. Not, not Murdoch. Not Quincy Murdoch. It's fine. Split my action. What do you mean exactly? Uh, take half of your attribute dice and take a second action. When you say take half, so you use strength to get when out you the split window. Split an action in this. All right. I mean, if you whatever you do next, whatever the attribute is, you only get half your dice round out. Um, your ability dice are still the normal pool. <clears throat> uh, yeah, sure. Why not? That sounds like something I do. Um, and it sounds like something Murdoch would definitely do. Uh, yeah, I want to. What? What's what's the situation in front of me? Like, what's going on? There's some kind of twisted supernatural creature doing some blasphemous version of magic that you can feel is just not not right. Okay. Destroying the Gatling gun. Cool. Um, I would like to shoot that individual. Roll it. So it'd be dex plus firearms, but you only get half your dex round down. Okay. Can I also do something to the bullet using magic? Uh, your pack lets you do that. What basically happens is add your arite, uh to the damage dice or the attack dice, but not both. Oh, well, I want to make the bullet uh, have massive as fuck, as in it has mass, so that it just hits like a Mack truck on this thing. You have matter two or three? I have matter three. Okay. Yes, uh, your pack channels your power, but it uses its own quintessence, so what you do is check off your backpack now has nine contestants left before the battery needs a recharge. Okay. And then roll the attack normally. Half round down dex plus firearms. If you hit, when we roll damage, you'll add your Arate dice to the damage pool. Okay, so half dex. Which should be like four extra damage dice. And fire. Also, which gun are you using? I don't remember which one. I gave you a bunch. <laughs> I'm going to use the one of the peacemakers. Okay. I should just use the shotgun. <laughs> that would be mean. Um, would, and by the I way, would. because I messed up the by the way, for the players, because I messed up who was Quincy, Sean now gets to use Quincy's turn. <laughs> What's I'm happening o here? I'm okay with this. Alright. Yeah. Uh, I've got a pool going here. Well, actually, I don't. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Get the fuck out. Um, that's three successes. Right. So you need one success to hit. Unless he dodges. Luckily for you, it's a Tremere. They're not known for celerity. <clears throat> He does not beat your attack roll. He does get enough successes, though, that you don't get any bonus damage. So you get your normal gun damage plus the Arate. Uh, so, so Arate is four. That particular gun is 7d6? Yep. Or 7d10? Uh, yep, that gun's a base 7, so now you're rolling 11d10s for damage. Adding up. All some dice here. Just hit the uh, the roll again. For what? Oh wait, that won't work. Shit. Hold on. Roll it now. If I check next to other traits, that's not gonna roll anything, is it? No. Damn it. All right. Should be a on. bonus dice spot. Oh, I can just do, I can at just the change top that. under difficulty. Way up at the top. Yeah. Nope. There we go. Boom. Wow. Six 
successes. That's really good. So vampires don't die from lethal damage and they can soak it. Again, Tremere are not known for being tough motherfuckers. Uh, he soaks two points of damage, which means the bullet hits him right here, but in the back, right? Mm hmm. And the bullet goes in, and it's just like a little Winchester bullet hole. But it comes out. And, like, it rips right through the shoulder, and his left arm just kind of hangs off. <laughs> that was what he I wanted. Turn around, flop, <laughs> turn around, torso torn in half, all floppy, and just, like, looks at you. <laughs> oh, what? <clears throat> Goes in a twenty-two, comes out a cannonball. <laughs> yes. Okay. If this is what we need the elephant gun for. And it would literally it be a Mack truck flying out. <laughs> it's, it's, in the, it's in the house. I did not bring it with me. Poor life choices, Steve. Poor life choices. <laughs> no, that means you can it's, get it. It's in the house. I'd have to go into the house, find it. Like It's just uh, it's a lot of work. Okay. The ghouls swarm Quincy. It's a storm of machine gun bullets screaming in blood. You don't know if he's dead or not. No, Quincy. And now, it's Ethan's turn to get screwed. So, the other vampire looks deep into your eyes and says, See what I see. What's your willpower? Uh, yes. <laughs> I actually only have five dots of willpower. Hmm. What? It's a I'm nice low DC to, for him. I'm used to so much more. <clears throat> yeah. I'm used to like seven. So you don't have the mental shield because the girl does. So yes, your mind is immediately flooded with maddening visions and hallucinations. You don't know what's real. There's horrible demon monsters pulling themselves out of a boiling inferno through the train car and clawing at you. You can actually feel the pain. Bats come swarming in through all the windows and are, like, clawing at your eyes. And you're pretty sure one of them is getting pulled out. It feels like it. Mm. To anyone watching, Ethan just starts screaming and flailing around and smacking his face into the wall. And, like, clawing at his own face and damaging himself. Yeah, I'm, I'm the muscle, ah, right? is fun. <laughs> All right, Ethan. I believe on your turn you wanted to shoot some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need... <clears throat> now, you can avoid shooting some shit by spending a willpower point, or you can take your chances and shoot some shit. There's a lot of bad guys around. Well, while that may be the case, do I have allies around? Uh, you don't see any. You just see monsters everywhere. <laughs> Allies, smell eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you actually glance out of the corner of your eye and you see Maisie screaming and yelling as, she, as she's pulled into the pits of hell by a demon. Oh, yep. Nope. Gonna shoot some shit. Someone, someone's stealing, stealing the gal. I'm gonna shoot some shit. Oh, so you'd like to shoot the demon dragging Maisie into hell? No, I would like to shoot where the thing was that had me looking into its eyes. Uh, you'd need to spend a willpower point to do that. I will do that. Okay. High or low? High, because I'm a raven. I rolled 47. Roll dexterity plus firearms. Eh. Come on, thing. Oh, better Somebody be roll sure. a d4 for me and tell me what you get. Roll a d4 Anybody who's got d4 you? handy. Oh. oh. Not, <laughs> not you. Some, yeah. Two. <laughs> Make you multitask. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's clicked. Make sure unselected other things. 
And that's a difficulty of... Six. Oh, even though... Okay. Please don't fail me. Maybe. Uh, no, it's Murdoch. It's Dave. Okay. So my internet apparently hates me. I am going to roll some meat roll space. Roll clicky clacks. <laughs> meat space dice. So let's see. That's four in firearms, five in dicks. I don't. Do I? <laughs> I don't have that many. <laughs> Wait, one, two. Yeah. You don't. I have to get you 10 D10s. Steven, you're oh. failing this city. <laughs> what did I What did I do? Nothing. That's the problem. You didn't make sure I ever had 10 D10s. What the, what the, what the... Isn't that like what every... Can't, can't, new... blame, can't blame Devin. He's not in the show. Isn't that what every new World of Darkness player gets? Like... Here's your eyeliner and here's your box of D10s. <laughs> your eyeliner. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> I never got the eyeliner. I mean, it used uh, to be clove cigarettes, but then they banned those. Rachel, please never leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Now I have to count. I really. <clears throat> Don't forget, cool. Rachel, okay. the soundtrack. Would you like me to roll? Would you like me to help roll you? Help you no, I've dice. got this. I've got one, two, three, four tens. Two Just sevens. Just roll them twice. Wait. Oh. Uh... Oh. So, for you, we'll just use the real rules. That'll make Zach smile. Uh, your specialty is in six shooters. All of those tens double. So that's eight successes, nine with the seven. Yeah, and the rest don't really matter because there's a one, a four, a three. Okay. So, you needed uh, one success to shoot the doctor. Uh, I mean, the, the Wait. mathematician. Wait. So, oh, okay, I was about to say, uh, I'm in a different car and I'm on the ground. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'd like you to roll damage for your gun. Okay, and that is... Then Wait, I'll tell you what, what, what the three... Well, I'll tell you what the two of them see. You're using your big, powerful... Basically, they're 45s. Your, their damage is... Uh, Six. 60, 10? Okay. And the rate is two. So go ahead and roll firearms plus dex again. Because you can fire twice in a turn. Okay, so 60 10s and go. Two nines, a 10, an 8. And two sixes. <gasps> One's getting so that's six so far. Plus then, that's six so far. Plus then, you needed to roll one success to hit your target. So roll another eight d10s. Good God, why? These numbers <laughs> turn out really poorly if Ethan misaimed because of the hallucinations. Yeah. Okay. I imagine so, in my unconsciousness, somebody will be joining me for tea very shortly. <laughs> a nine, two eights. Uh, okay, I lied. Two nines, two eights, a three, a one, a five, and a two. Right, so you lost one on that, so... Nine damage? Pretty sure that's right. Now roll your second attack. God. You can fire twice with this particular gun. How do you guys automatically convert this to, to successes? <sighs> See if my internet's working now. Then, after you're done, we're going to do some mage cheating. Mage cheating, great. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, am I rolling all nine dice again? It's, yep. Oh, Second God. attack roll, basically, yeah. Physically In this hurts case, me. I'm doing it. Two 
tens. It's four. Okay, two good start. Two sixes. Five, six. Six. Uh, two, th or four, three. No, sorry. Three, three. No, four threes. Sorry. And okay. one. So now you're going to roll uh, 11 d10 for damage. Six plus five. <laughs> I don't have that many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm dying over here. How many D10s do you need from me? Eleven. Wow. I'm putting everyone through physical pain right now. Wow. I'm so sorry. Okay, Only so because they're unsure who you're shooting. I don't even know. I don't even know, guys. I don't I don't I don't even I know. Do. Hold on, let me Oh god, please be the bad guy. This is a Tyler game. It's not let's the just bad say, game. Let's let's just say one of them was. Oh fuck. Okay. I'm sorry, whoever I'm shooting. I I uh, do not apologize, however, for being the sharpest shooter in the West. Okay. Probably me. Handful of dice. Do you see this, people? Okay. <laughs> okay. So. I hate numbers. <laughs> Two nines, two eights, a seven. <clears throat> what the hell number is that? Oh, that's okay. A five, a four, two threes, and two twos. That's five. So, yeah, uh, you straight up blow away one of the ghouls. Let's not have fortitude as a discipline. Like, to Maisie and Joffrey, bullets fly everywhere, like ghouls are getting hit, but one of them gets hit, like, right in the eye. Perfect shot. And sprains splatter the wall. And Joffrey's like, woohoo! And then Maisie gets hit in the face and dies. What? Ah! Joffrey. What? What? You're a time mage. What are you willing to sacrifice <gasps> for your friends? Oh, no. Daughter. God. Your close friend's daughter. Damn How it. much straights are you willing to pay? Uh, to undo this. Give him all the straights. Every single straight. Just all give st <laughs> Okay. <laughs> just, oh, Except for my favorite straights. Leave them alone. All the straights. So basically, are... Joffrey, as the time mage, you realize I don't need to figure out what's going to happen. We're all going to die if I don't fix this and go back to where we don't get ambushed. Yeah, go back in time. Have everyone jump out a window. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh... Even if you're all just in the same room. <laughs> it's better than what's happening right now. Yeah. So, uh, how... For the folks at home, clearly, how does to, time you, travel you work? Only, <laughs> you only have to re re rewind a few turns. So it's only going to mostly wreck you. Mostly. Uh, <laughs> that's always good. All right. Yeah. So your feet of time is to step several people out of time for purposes of the rulebook. And it is within a year, so that's working in your favor. Uh, do I have to step them all out, or... And I don't know if this Everyone would be better save, or worse. Yes. But could I go back and just start running around telling everyone to group up? Do I have yeah, to bring everyone, over, or just myself? Uh, shake my body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. You're, I you mean, go back far enough, yes. You'd have to go back farther to have time to stop them from leaving the train car. Right. Yeah, because technically you don't know that I'm on the ground. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> or what is going on with Sir Arthur. You assume it's bad, but you don't know how bad. We oh, could have we could have the upper hand for all you know. <laughs> we could be winning. You say uh, that someone's been shot in the face. <laughs> now, Is for the audience, rules? I will say for those who missed. Yes, I'm gonna address yeah. that and uh, other people who said the same thing. Uh, for those who don't know, weren't here for session zero. Victorian mage doesn't work quite the same. The world has not quite become the rigid consensus it is in modern mage. In some areas, things are still flexible, especially in a train car full of nothing but wizards and vampires. 
Therefore, that's why it's not actually paradox, and it's not actually vulgar. It's uncanny and extreme, and uh, it's definitely not elegant. So it's not going to instantly blast you out of existence, but it is going to be real bad for you. Actually less bad for you paradox-wise, straights-wise, if you move everyone back than if you go back far enough to warn them all. <laughs> Harder spell, less damaging to you. You going back alone is much easier, but it's going to hurt more. Rewind, everyone. It's fine. I'm for Bana. You can end my right. bloodline. You know, it's thousands of years old. <laughs> Gotta rewind, people. Flares. Anyway. I recommend some quintessence here, but let's see what happens. Oh, definitely. Actually, that's instant duration, so that's better. Uh, did I get everything? Yes. All right, so. You're going to need six successes at a difficulty of seven, unless you spend some quintessence. Quintessence time. How much can I spend? <laughs> Up to your avatar, or prime if you have prime. I do have Prime and I do have Avatar, so Avatar's higher. So I'll be spending... Uh, so... Ooh. You could essentially burn it all because you only have, a right now, Quintessence equal to your Avatar since you haven't fed on any nodes in the story. If I spend two Quintessence... Each point you spend is minus one to the DC. Oh, okay. Minimum three, can't go below three. All right, I'll spend it all. It's the only way. How much do you have? I have three. Nice. All right, so your difficulty is now four. Oh. And I'm going to need you to mark four straights, please, to start. Okay, I need to find four straights. Hold on. Um, one, just... Uh, Can't help you, I'm sorry. Oh. There's right. uh, there's three available that I can see. No, there's four. There's four available that I can see in Zoom. Rust. All right, first roll, I got four successes. Mostly straight. That helps. Four successes. Roll again. Right. And that's three successes. Okay, so... Uh, stand by. We're going to make this cinematic rather than burn through the turns because there is a chance that he dies casting the spell. It took two turns. <laughs> Even fast casting, that took two turns. Wow. So, after Maisie died, it would have been the doctor who's dead, and then it would have been the ghoul pack on Sir Arthur. So I'm going to do a cinematic roll. And try to dodge, Sir Arthur. You need me to dodge? Remember, you'd be splitting your dice, so half decks round down plus athletics. <clears throat> half decks. Uh, is plus it, athletics. Uh, do I round, round down, you said, right? Down. Yep. Jeez. Plus <laughs> athletics. Athletics. See, this is gonna be go terrible. Like, <laughs> yep. Difficulty what? Six. Two successes. So, cinematically, one roll to cover all your dodges. But if you actually roll the dice, every subsequent dodge, you lose a dice out of your pool. <laughs> Because it gets harder to dodge more than one attack. I have two dice to work five with of them. right now. Yes, and there are five of them. Okay. One of them you get out of the way of, but not the other four. Who do a combined total cinematic scene again of eight lethal damage clawing you to death. Sir Arthur dies. 
Yes, so, friend, friend of the flesh. Next would have been... <laughs> next would have been... Maisie, who's dead. That's true. And then, Quincy. Plus 10 damage for a Gatling gun on four. Plus his success in shooting. Minus the damage to the Gatling gun. He actually weighs, lays waste to most of the ghouls That's before awesome. he's overrun. Oh, no. <laughs> and oh. completely wrecks Sir Arthur's house. He's like, grabs it, and he's just like pulling it in a circle while it's firing in the middle of the house. <laughs> That's how and I then it out. would have been Joffrey's turn for his first turn. Joffrey would have activated round one. Round two. Is your willpower, Sean? No, uh, Murdoch. A thousand. Okay, Kane. Uh, it's going to be seven. Okay. Hundred. Uh, the, <laughs> the Tremere uses uh, the uh, thaumaturgical, I want to say school, it's not a school, the thaumaturgical school of uh, controlling bodies. Come again? Make you stand real still for him. And lift your chin up and hold your neck out. But he fails because he couldn't beat your willpower. Fuck yeah. He got partial success, which means you're uh, taking, if if time wasn't about to rewind, you'd be taking penalties for the whole turn. Like if you're partially paralyzed, he doesn't gain control of you. Then it would have been Arthur's turn, but he's dead. And then it would have been Murdoch's turn, who would have fried the Tremere. I don't even need you to roll. He was actually pretty damaged. <laughs> even if you don't kill him, you destroy the body enough, they can't do anything except squirm. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on before you continue. Is this Time Mage about to undo my killing of a vampire? I yep. will allow you to kill him so hard he dies twice. All right, I'm, I'm actually, no. Then. You know what? He couldn't anyways. He doesn't have correspondence. I have correspondence too. So you actually get to do your attack. Finish the vampire. Nothing changes for you. Can can I just go with your I fright to pieces and move on? <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. Like, unless well, roll your attack. You you could botch. Roll your attack. Because if your backpack botches, that's real bad. Otherwise, yes. I don't need you to roll damage. I I guess that's dexterity plus firearms. <laughs> and then subtract a second point of quintessence to make the bullet mass have uh, way more mass than it should get. Uh, done. Of the gun, of the backpacks, quintessence, not your personal. Uh, okay, yeah. That's at eight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you actually do actually kill the vampire because the bullet impacts its throat and just rips its head off, which is one of the ways that you kill vampires. I am excited. <laughs> He's actually surprised that he did it. Murdoch's just like, oh! <laughs> Ghoul pack. <clears throat> you can do a cinematic willpower roll. The ghoul pack makes a cinematic roll. It means I'm only rolling twice for the group instead of one for each of them. Just the way that this is all being phrased is very hilarious to me, and I love it. <laughs> uh, I like how Chronicles of Darkness says it, down and dirty fighting. Uh, the ghoul pack... Half of them rush to avenge their master. The other half rush to feed on the bleeding out master. So oh, oh, only five no. of the ghouls are going to try to rip you apart, Murdoch. Oh. Huh. huh. That's huh. unfortunate. With one group attack. <laughs> and botch. 
Yeah. Oh. It's just a massive clusterfuck of ghouls getting nowhere, tripping over the ones feeding on the monster, trying to get at you, running into each other. Wow. All you need is a vaudeville stage and some accordion music. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Then the Malkavian who is laughing over what's happening with Ethan is going to maintain the effect, so he'll burn his turn. Doctor's dead. Ghoul pack in the train thinks they accomplished their goal, so they're just tearing apart bodies. Maisie's dead. Quincy. We'll finish burning through the second ammo box and clear the house. Uh, and now it's Joffrey's turn. So, no, you did die. Look at that. Joffrey's hmm. like, second turn, your spell goes there. off. He's whispering. And go ahead, and, go ahead and describe your rewind of time key style. Yeah, all right. So Joffrey's hiding under a table, muttering the calculations to himself as everyone's dying around him. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining the whole like numbers floating around someone's head thing is beginning to happen just very faintly in the air, and everything starts to rewind. Yeah. What does it look like in reality, yeah. though? So in reality... Do you, like, float oh. dreamily back through time, or do people actually go backwards? How does it yeah. <laughs> they go backwards. Like, Joffrey himself starts tedious. backing. Like, <laughs> starts speaking in reverse. Uh, but he's aware of it. It's really weird for Joffrey. <laughs> You're really good at that, Dwayne. <laughs> Bullets start like flying back into uh, their barrels and everything. In the, I'm rewinding on the train, not for Murdoch though. Hmm. Murdoch, you rewind all Vampire the way back to right before. So you actually rewind right to when the Doctor walks out with the new face, and you pop out of the spell just in time to hear Sir Arthur say, "Excuse me, sir, you don't belong here." Wait, what? Now, do they have any memory of what will happen? Nope. Okay. You pulled them back, but they're not aware of it. Joffrey's going to... Uh, he's going to get up, just run over. No, no. Can't leave. You can't leave. No. They're, they're going... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Joffrey. I'm... You seem a bit perturbed. Are you okay? No. For, for dramatic effect and to help the party out. He's white as a sheet. He's got a slate tick in his eye and he is covered in blood. It's warm. But it's not his. Joffrey, what... Uh, who's, who, whose blood are you wearing? No. Oh. Roll me alertness plus awareness, Maisie. Your life rage. She asks okay. so casually. What the tarnation, woman? I'm gonna come here and then... I'm gonna kill uh... you, you, and you. What difficulty? Six. Ah. One success. It's your blood. Um. I'm going to ask you a very personal question. Why are you covered in my own blood? You, you <laughs> died. Excuse me. You you died. You will you will die. You. Oh. I'm begging your pardon, Mr. Joffrey. Are you threatening me? No 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 no. The... Uh, Explain yourself, man. What's going on? Someone Go, get this they're man going a drink. to attack. They're going to attack. <laughs> Who? Who's going to attack? And the... You're muted. There we go. No, he's just quiet. Beasts, they're going to. Oh, was it just quiet? Sorry. Yeah, it was very quiet. Be beasts. Those. Those. those they... They shoot lightning from their hands. And then something really weird happens, Joffrey. Oh. Sir Arthur splits. Mm -hmm. And one Sir Arthur walks out of the train car with the doctor while the other doctor and the Sir Arthur stare at you. And you can see two train cars. Like when you hit a bump, they kind of go off mm -hmm. key. 
you guys all see blood start to come out of his left nostril. Oh no. His blood. Uh, Joffrey, you might want to sit down. Doctor. Uh, Someone get this man a drink. No, doctor. That was not the do... time for drinks. Doctor, no, do I. To... You I'm try going... to hand him a drink? I would like to use. There my... are drinks in the car. I, I would like to use my life and spirit to examine his pattern. Okay. Uh, yes, Maisie, yes, please, thank you. Give me another alertness plus awareness roll. Okay. Sorry, Steve, what'd you say? No, I was trying to remember who had life spheres to get them to look Ooh. at Joffrey. Do, do either Sir Arthur or the doctor try to give Joffrey a drink? There are many in the train car. It's brandy yes. and brandy glass. Yes. A successes. You hand it to him, and he's just like, I don't need a drink, and tries to grab it, and phases through it. Ah! What? Oh, and then God, he's like, wait, nice. what? And he tries to grab it again, and his hand partially phases through it, and then the cup shatters, and it's embedded in his hand. Take uh, one lethal damage, Joffrey. Uh, whoa. Oh. Also, your paradox just dropped from six to three. Uh, your straights. I'm sorry. My your straights. straights. I'm <laughs> losing my straights. Your straights burn out. Mm. And uh, you lose half of it, but you're <laughs> taking the other half as damage that I'm spreading out over the sea. When Maisie's done, there's something I'd like to do, too. But let's see yeah. what Maisie does. I got three successes on that roll. It's like his consciousness keeps going out of phase, his body, too. It's not in phase with reality. Um, his His awareness is not congruent with his body. I'm... I'm not good at this sort of magic, but can someone anchor him? Uh, you can try um, to anchor yourself, Key. Yeah. I. Uh, oh, goodness. Let me bandage that. I'll tend to his hand yes, wound. Yes, please see if you are able to attend to his wounds. I'll see what I can do in his... It's not exactly... Not exactly, I think, the perfect answer, but let me look as well. And using entropy, his progression through events, like the you know, the, the pattern of like and I know it's not time exactly, but you know, entropy is tied to time ultimately. Um you know what's his progression through the pattern of events? Like is he jumping and skipping back and forth? Is he running parallel like parallel to us like you know so, stuff like that like you're just trying to sense you can't you cannot anchor him with entropy but you can use it to sense and yeah i won't make your roll again it's a lot of awareness rolls but sure he's out of phase with this timeline because he's not from it he's from a future timeline this he's man, not lying this this man is this mr joffrey is not mr joffrey Apparently, where uh, he's covered in your daughter's blood. Maybe you should listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you go, Joffrey? I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. It's when I was here. And who did you time travel? Yes. <laughs> travel. Right. Through like time. shaking people by their shoulders. Very American of you. <laughs> uh, Maisie will. Uh, she's wrapping the bandage right here. Hold still. I'm to hold still. You need to. Would you like to try to ground yourself, Joffrey? Anchor yourself in this timeline. Ah, uh, who? Ha uh, Can I so do that with time three? Oh yeah, you could do that with time one. That's the very basic thing uh, you learn is how to ward and strengthen time. So, roll your Arate against difficulty four. All right. Sorry, uh, jo uh, Sir Arthur, hold on one second. No, no, it's okay. At one success. Roll again. All right. Another one success. Okay. So, Maisie, you're bandaging him when the bandages slip through as he phases out, but you're in mid-wrap, so you can't really stop. And he phases back in. And you rip the bandage from inside of his arm, tearing his arm open. He screams in pain. You take two more lethal damage, Joffrey. Uh. Uh -huh. 
Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry three, that is, so that has never happened before. Oh. But then it's to you guys, to you the rest of you, it's like he becomes more real suddenly. Whatever he's doing, he's he's forcing himself into this timeline. Joffrey, you suddenly feel like, okay, I think that part's over. But you got this really weird feeling. I think you attracted the attention of something timeless. <laughs> no. That's a problem for future Joffrey. I am future Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> future, future What were you going to ask, Sir Arthur? Uh, well, first I was going to uh, tell everyone to thank Not My Cake for a 19-month subscription. Um, oh, awesome. 19 months. Oh, Look at you. Nice. Yep, wow. you just hit 19 months. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and um, oh, I was yeah. just going to ask if it's only, you know, is it just his time that was off, or could we have used Spirit to anchor, you know, his... The only way okay. to anchor a out of time time maze is time. time. Okay, all right, and that's all. Yeah. I was just curious. One of the few instances when you can't hook it with another spear, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I was just curious. I thought Good maybe question, we could though. grab his spear out of time to do and like to shove spears. it into a body in the past and just be like, "You're here now." <laughs> like, well, with Spirit Four, you could do that, but you tear him out of his body and force him into someone else's, displacing their current spirit, which we you could do. That sounds fine to me. All the straights will come to your train car, though. We don't want all the that straights lesson. here. That'd be... That'd be pretty bad. So, yes, for straights. the viewers who are newer to Mage, for the viewers who are newer to Mage, that's the cinematic way to describe Paradox or the straights in Victorian Mage. When you gain a lot all at once or when you just accrue enough, the storyteller can determine when to devilishly roll your Paradox against a certain DC and each success hurts the Mage but removes Paradox as reality fights back. That was him phasing in and out of reality. But if you accrue too much or do too much ogre magic all at once, you attract paradox spirits that want to fix things. They mm. want to yank you back to your correct timeline someday, somewhere, somehow. Has Key made the... But that's future Joffrey's problem. I'm future Joffrey. He was able to anchor himself, yes. Okay, all right. So you can now clearly elucidate what's happening to the Joffrey. Now, what is happening... They kick, they kick down the doors in, in the cart and... <laughs> A lot for me, I'm sorry. <sighs> Jaffrey starts, like, going from pale to green, like he's about to throw up. That, by the way, is still going to covered in you. They're about to kick down the doors. Then you accomplish one goal, you're all going to be in the same car when it happens in three turns. I prep my guns. For which direction? Well, he hasn't from told where? You that oh. yet. Oh. From where? Now, they, quickly. They, they come from, from both doors. We have a matter of seconds. Uh, I want to reach out as quick as I can with Entropy 3 Correspondence 2. Old timey train cars like this, you have to do the the step across, right? There's the little platforms, okay? Um, I'm assuming, you know, if he's saying that they're just walking through, that's all I have to go on. I want to reach off and I want to entropy the metal on the step into our train car at a distance going in both directions so that the next people who step on those fall underneath the train. Well, so uh, Maisie will say, uh, Father, can you empower the wards and make them into traps? Can I? <laughs> uh, I do either of the two things uh, that have just been said. I'm clicking buttons. <laughs> Entropying the floor will be faster. Okay. You can do both, but the entropy effect looks like it'll be faster and number of successes needed. Okay. We'll have to talk about entrapping wards. Uh, 
So it would just be that thing where they're like walking all uh, badass, and then when they step on that metal to come in through our door, it's just gonna collapse out from under them, and they're gonna get wrecked by the train. So, you need difficulty four, two successes, because this is what you do. <laughs> um, and that's just air. That's just an arate roll, right? Yep. Okay, Arate roll, difficulty four, here we go. Uh, that's going to cancel out one success. That's two successes. Which is was my goal, you said, right? Yep. Yep. Your spell is successful. Ethan, what are you going to do? I saw something in Discord, but tell everybody. I am going to go war birdie. Actually, describe it. That's more exciting. Okay. Um So I'm so sorry. This is so comical in my head and I know it's not supposed to be comical. It's supposed to be nice and dark. Um You suddenly see Yeah, but where Raven form is comical is nothing to do about that. Okay. Oh, okay. As long as it's not just me. So you see the book specifically says they don't like doing it because it's so silly looking darn but yay <laughs> you see ethan's back start to arch out and you hear cracking noises like each and every bone is changing well i mean it is changing shape and you see pinpricks of blood start to cover his skin and drip off as feathers begin to protrude from his skin, but he doesn't shrink. He becomes this anthropomorphic raven where the wings come off from the arm. Not not like a full wing, but um, kind of and, and I don't know if the book has this, but this is for my artistic purposes. He still has his hands, but they're bird feet fingered now. And at the end of every single raven toe is long, dangerous looking claws and a very short beak begins to grow. And it, it sounds as if, if you've ever heard tile popping because the foundation is settling. That's what that sounds like. And you hear some skin sloughing off, falling in wet glops onto the floor as the feathers displace some of the skin. And the eyes are half human, half bird. So there's slight whites of the eyes, enough to enough that you know this isn't an animal. But not quite human and he does have a slight tail which of course makes the very same sounds that the rest of the feathers do when growing from his skin and his feet are now large raven feet as well and another artistic addition when he opens his beak, there's razor sharp teeth within them. The end. Maisie, is there anything you'd like to do in preparation? Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. Carry on. Uh, okay. Oh, I said the end. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Maisie's like, oh, uh, father doesn't want to empower my lords, fine, I'll empower them myself. <laughs> so, uh, starts uh, giving an incantation over the wards uh, that she's already given. Um, trying to, so, I've got life three, is that enough to hurt the first people to cross the wards? Yes. Okay, so, she starts giving... How much giving... would you like to hurt them? I'm sorry? How much would you like to hurt them? A little, a moderate, or a shitload? I mean, this guy just like staggered in wearing my own blood saying that I died, so a whole bunch. <laughs> he did! 
And so, okay. uh, so she does her whole verbena thing where, like, her hands are already covered with her own blood because she's been, like, uh, wiping it on the lintels. And so she's like, all right, where can I make another fucking cut? Okay, and so she starts um, invoking Athena as the uh, Grecian goddess of defensive combat, but then looks over and sees what Ethan's up to, like, nope, Morgan, Morgan, we could really use your help right about now, please. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and roll your Arate. You have five rolls, but you don't have five turns. You only need three successes, but the difficulty is six. Okay. Unless uh, you burn some quintessence. I will burn. I will burn. I've got three. I will burn eight quintessence. Difficulty is five. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a ten. Okay. Oh, oh, that's a really good roll. Okay, three successes already. Okay. Uh, okay, three successes on that roll. Well, you needed. Ray. You oh, actually only a... needed uh, two successes, so you moved up a step on the damage chart. Oh, that. What about you, Doc? Essence well spent. Mm-hmm. Because I did roll a five. Oh. I was also thinking of empowering Maisie's word well, but I don't want to uh, mess up that magic. I have life four. Try and do some heart stoppages. So you want to... You could prep it so that when they come through, you're in large, oh, it's already most of the cast. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, right. Also, I should point out, every single one of you, two Paradox, except uh, Ethan, because there are two straights. Because every single thing you're doing is very extreme and or vulgar, depending on what area you're in. <laughs> but I don't want to. <laughs> oh, boy. Stopping hearts, you say. Yes. I don't know exactly what's coming so, through. Since... To a single, to a single target, it's going to be a difficulty of six with four successes required. If we change that to a group, difficulty goes to seven. Successes don't change. Mm. And that's a small group, not all of them. Like the first few to come through. Well, let's burn a quintessence and bring it back down to six for the group. Roll it. You get two rolls before they burst through, and then if you need to, you keep going. I am rolling Arate, correct? Yep. <laughs> Make could get it with a good roll. What was it? Uh, six, right? Six. Yeah. Uh, so there's two, three, and I get to re-roll that ten. Four. That's four. Done. That's what you needed. You'd be ready when they come through. Us, us, us. With blade waving in the air. Now... It's too bad. It's early, because this would be the perfect cliffhanger. But it's not. So they come through the door, and a couple of things are going to happen. <laughs> First off, exactly what Arthur wanted to happen happens. When they storm through everywhere they step, the floor collapses. All the way to the ground. The train car breaks in half and starts to tilt and fall into two pieces and go rolling off the tracks. <laughs> You broke the car right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, while that's happening, though, it gets even better. Ghouls that don't go fly, flailing down and get run over or hit by debris or train wheels. See Ethan transform into a were-raven, and there's this little thing called delirium that happens to mortals who see shapeshifters change form. Doesn't happen to mages. 
At least not these mages. It does happen to ghouls. Everyone that actually sees you do it screams and jumps off the train. <laughs> Just break and run. Except for the three who uh, walk in the train door, gasp for air, their faces turn pale, and then blood comes splurting out of their eyes and mouths. <laughs> their hearts explode. Ethan calls in appreciation. And the one... <laughs> And the one that actually just explodes into gore that splatters everywhere that hits the ward. <laughs> You're going to be traumatized by this, Joffrey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so not only does he have future Maisie's blood, but now it's just like splat, splat. <laughs> Remember We're over our here, offline like, discussion yes. about the different... <laughs> now, I will point this out, too. For you guys and for the audience. Remember our offline discussion about the difference between a prepared mage and an unprepared? You just yeah. saw it. You died, and you wiped them off the map. That's the difference. <laughs> oh. And also, the one that exploded into gore was the lieutenant leader, Tremir. So, he's real dead. How then, dead is he? Real but then, dead. The train car is broken about across the bottom. So it splits out this way, and with a horrible tearing of metal, it goes flat and then starts flipping over and over and pulls the train with it because it was still attached. I mean, Whoa, the, what? derail the train. <laughs> is that, is that, a, that a Your car was thing? right in the middle. <laughs> it was right in the middle. You took out the entire bottom of the floor. It was still attached to the ceiling, so it kind of went flat. And then it tried to roll off the track and pulled the train with it because it's still attached to both ends. The train derails. Oh. Uh, this is worse than what happened before. Um, 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> um, At least we're still alive. For now. Can the rest uh, of this game just be Joffrey like having to reverse time and like solve what? this one moment? <laughs> <laughs> Joffrey runs in as Joffrey's explaining like, no, you That's... have to get ready. No, yep. don't split the train in half. That's the episode, just Joffrey <laughs> jumping back 50 times. Five Joffreys by the end of say, the session. Gosh. He's, by the time we're done, he's just going to look like Tom Cruise going, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Uh. So, let's do athletics plus decks, but only half your decks because you're splitting your action for everyone. Uh, announce your results in order, beginning with Doctor after you roll. Difficulty 7, because the train is flying through the air. Also, another amusing note, because you were, because you're mages who try to be cautiously elegant and subtle, because you're fighting vampires who hide in the shadows, we call this skill because that's a Victorian word for shadows and quiet. It's not true anymore. I'm going to have to change the name of this adventure. <laughs> uh... So are we are we announcing in the normal order? Wait, what are we rolling? Uh, no, do Dwayne e do uh, uh, the Doctor Ethan, Maisie, Sir Arthur, and then Jeffrey. Half your decks and then your athletics. Athletics. Oh, yeah. So seven. Oh, my no. three fucking dice. Half decks. Do we round down or round up? Down. I botched. No. Down. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Don't, I botched. don't botch. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Difficulty what? Seven. Seven. Uh, that's three. Difficulty Devin. Three out of three. Ain't bad. Three is a complete success. Oh, sweet. You actually grab a hold of something and ride it out. So you actually only take three bashing damage as you are lacerated and bashed to hell. But Yay. pretty good. Ethan, I remember, don't... you're in Were-Raven form. It's your enhanced decks. Oh, shoot. What is that? <laughs> Should be on your sheet, but I'm pretty sure it's plus three or four. Uh, scroll down to the second page plus of the PDF. Three. Plus three. Not not the mage sheet, but your actual PDF. Yeah, Rachel. Oh right. yeah, it's I don't have that open. That. And with, if my wait, do you know off the top of your head, Rachel, what the strength boost is for a werewolf? Because that's what the dex boost is for a werewolf. I think it's four in Krynos. It's disgusting. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's so you got well. four decks. Oh lordy. Okay. You have less strength but more decks. Goddamn numbers. Wait, less strength but more. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's. Yeah, Way Ravens aren't strong, but they're fast. Five. So it's nine okay. dice I get to roll. <laughs> Goddamn. 
<laughs> also, it's an athletics check in Were Raven form. All your athletics checks are minus two, so your difficulty is five. Okay. Always go war form. Well. Even if you look like a uh, emo big bird. Emo big bird. God damn it, Tyler. Oh, you you made me like squint my eyes so hard that my contact moved because I was just <laughs> that. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so Rachel explained to me that six and up are successes. Uh, ones usually take away, but Tyler's house rule is that if you roll a ten, uh, that doesn't happen. Okay, I have five successes. Yeah, one no ten tens. kills on ones for me because I'm brutal. How many successes? Five. That is a critical success, so... Uh, you can lend two successes to Joffrey when we get to him. Maisie, nice. what'd you get? Uh, so I rolled a five, a three, and a one. <laughs> oh no! Well, so oh, I no, might need some of those those lent successes. You're gonna have to decide who to help, Maisie or Joffrey. <laughs> oh. Ethan. There's no time to get to them both. Unless you have a cool gift that lets you do there's, something nifty. There's no but time, so. you say. <laughs> <laughs> I I approve of that. Can I use that moment? <laughs> Can he pause it and I go help them both? How difficult would it be to cast a spell Maybe. to dilate Ethan so he can move fast enough to, to catch us both? To dilate Ethan, that sounds While flying terrifying. through the air on a botched dodge roll? Pretty hard. Okay, never mind. <laughs> You're on your own. Good luck. I, I feel like I owe Maisie for uh, accidentally shooting her in the face and killing her last time. So it, Wait, it wasn't you. you don't it remember was doing it, yes. It was... It was not you. You're good. Oh, You're was, fine. It was right. not doesn't me. Count, I mean, reason. like, <laughs> doesn't I, count. I technically blame the vampire inflicting dementation on you, <laughs> but I won't mm -hmm. say no to the help. <laughs> Player feels guilty <laughs> that they <laughs> shot you. <laughs> it's amazing. Instead of three lethal damage, because you botched, you only take one. However, Were Raven takes one lethal also, but... You're aware, Raven. You'll super heal that next turn. <laughs> and what about good the good doctor? You're Joffrey? Oh, I'm sorry. I called him the doctor. What about Sir Arthur, leader of the pack? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I had two successes. Two? Yeah. Okay. You take one bashing damage, you hit your head real hard on a window, but then you catch yourself and ride it out. Okay, two, one, two bashing damage. And then you said, Joffrey, you botched? So, I would have had two dice with half dex plus athletics. And then I'm also injured, so that's a minus one. And I rolled a one yes, on so one die. So... Oh, yep. yeet. How much damage did you already have? I have three lethal already. Oh, okay. I'm... Nice knowing you guys. Uh, go Luckily, go the person who can resurrect you is not dead this time around. Uh, I'm so yes. <laughs> you you all hear the horrible crunches the doctor's neck shatters when he, like he hits the wall and bends like you shouldn't. The train rolls. The screech of metal, screaming, could be the wheels, could be the other passengers, could be both. Smell of freshly cut grass, dirt. Uh, sense of buoyancy is the piece of train you're all on. It hits like a, a retention pond nearby and hits the water. Cold ass water, blowing wind, and then just quietness. English water too. Mm. English water too. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> You all have time to take quick stock, and you realize Jeffrey's dead. Moments matter, uh, Doc, because life four, you can't wait too long. It's like the difference between Ray's dead and whatever that other revivify in D&D. Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me look it up real quick. Covered in everyone's blood. Also, you remember what happened to Joffrey when he messed with time? Yeah, it's going to happen to me, too. 
But that's okay. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, Life 4 does let you bring them back from the dead as long as they're freshly dead. And you can't get fresher than me. I just died. You can't create life late yet because you need mind and spirit, but you can return life as long as he's willing. Even if he's unwilling, you can contest it and try to force it. No. He has not fully okay. become a wraith yet. Yeah. So yeah, I, don't want to come back. I, have I want to I have five minutes. If he doesn't bring you back, I will oh my God. I will eat your body so that you can not be left out in the Anyway, <laughs> uh, on your only only his eyes, only eat his eyes. But yes, I have five if minutes. You did fail before. to resurrect him. It's going to get real weird next week when I bring him back as a race. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> okay, Wait, you won't. So I will uh, drag his body. So you're willing out of to the try. Water. I am okay. willing to try. I will drag his I'll body set this out up of the while water. you explain it. Yes, I will drag his body out of the water onto the bank. And then I will take my... I will rip open his shirt, take my scalpel, start drawing in some life sigils on his body. I draw the exact same ones on my already rescarred chest. Or actually, yeah. It would have rescarred over. Uh, yeah. Could Macy help with this with life three? Yes, you can assist in the ritual, lending your dice to the roll, so you both take turns rolling. And okay, then, uh, which is good. It's gonna be intense. This is this is where the creepiness comes in. So, in order to give life, I must give life. So I will tear off my pinky with the knife oh, like on my it. left on my left finger, my left hand. And I will place it inside Joffrey's mouth. Life mm. for life. Do doctor, is that... It'll grow back, don't worry. Seems unsanitary. Uh, is, is that um, necessary? Yes. Carry on. <laughs> Whether it is or not, <laughs> he does it. <laughs> I mean, Maze nods in agreement. This is totally keeping with her paradigm. I like how everyone questioned Joffrey's now, watch, but this is perfectly acceptable. I I'm questioning the. Here's where it gets even worse. You can already see people are because this wasn't like in the middle of nowhere train line. This was going between and through cities, <laughs> people are right? Starting to walk over, which means you have to fast cast. So difficulty will be seven. Uh, well, hold on. Where exactly are we? Like what's like somewhere halfway between Bethlehem Hospital and London and in the suburb. So we're still in the city. You never oh, really yeah. left it on this train route, correct? Okay. Like the outskirts. Uh, okay. Uh, difficulty will be seven. You will need six successes. Oh, yeah. two of you. <laughs> yeah. Begin, Doctor. You go first. Six successes also, between the two of us. Also, since you're splitting it, you can thank Maisie. You will both take three straights. As the do, paradox do, washes between the two of you instead of all of it on Duane. Do the straights consent to this? Do do I do yeah, I, I straight right. the straights are the straights are eager for this. I will allow this. <laughs> Straight the straights would very much like to ravage them. Ooh. Uh, now, here, here's the fun part. Do I actually want to roll it in astral, or do I want to do it with my physical dice? <laughs> physical dice, the more obedient. Physical dice, because uh, physical dice are more fun, and you can lie to me. I was just about to say, you, you just lie. Just whatever you're doing. To keep a lie. PC alive. All right. All right. No, I, no, I, no, I, I am rolling a race. It'll be fine. I'm rolling Eritrea, correct? Yes. Just to make sure. With target of seven, right? 
Correct. Okay. Oh, that's a 10. So that's a 2. Good start. And another 10 is... 1. That's 3. That's 3. Maisie, go. Okay. Uh, so Maisie is already pretty banged up and bloody. And she will just smear her blood... Uh, just all over Joffrey as she is uh, chanting something about life, death, and rebirth. And we're just going to accelerate the timeline for this rebirth. Uh, what's the difficulty? Seven. Seven. One success. Or round two. Go, Doc. Mm. It's funny how in each timeline I become covered in Maisie's blood. That's one, two, and a <laughs> ten. Wait, so two. Some things are just fixed points in time. Two successes. Six. That's it. That's what you needed. Uh, go ahead and roll awareness plus alertness, Arthur, because of what you sent me in Discord. Sir Arthur is a shark as a Chakramanti, yes? Uh, yes. Or Akashayana. I couldn't remember. No, which is the cha- no. As Chakravanti. A uh, is obsessed with death and chooses to watch what happens through the shroud. You said what? With his eyes of entropy. Alert, awareness plus uh, perception. perception. Difficulty eight. Three, four, five. Three, four, five, six, and seven dice. Can I use willpower to make sure I get as much out of this as I can, since I know that what they're doing? No, because the difficulty is set by the gauntlet, because you're in the city. Willpower, if if you botch, though, you can spend it to not take the side effect of the botch. But it won't automatically make you get anything cool. Here we go. Difficulty 8, you said? Yep. Uh, that's three eights and a one, so two successes. And then like a bunch of fives right. and threes and whatnot. Two is a not complete, but solid. So when he dies, you see that something slips out of him and falls down, but also sideways. And then like, you're not sucked into it, but you sense the vertigo as if you were. Up becomes down, left becomes right, and everything gets grayed over and <laughs> smoggier and foggier than London in the Victorian era. Mm. And everything like instantly starts to rot, crumble just a little bit in some places a lot. The buildings, the plants, the structures. And it's like you're in a dark reflection where everything is constantly slowly dying of the real world. All the people disappear except you can see Joffrey, except... That's where his body should be, but all you see is like, almost like an egg, almost like a quivering jello-like egg of swirling white and green. You walk over to it, you kind of poke it, and it like quivers and wobbles, and you can sort of see the outline of the my cane, not never with my finger, with my cane. Yes. Uh, You can Mm. kind of see his outline inside of it, like he's in some kind of cocoon. And then you hear a noise that's somewhere between a scream and laughter, and you look, and coming up over the rise are two beings. You can't call them human. They're carrying pickaxes, and they're wearing clothes of, like, uh, mine workers. But they're far too tall, and they're twisted in odd ways, and they have an arm all the way around, one in the front, one in the back, one in the left, one in the right. Okay. They have, like, dual tails coming out. And their faces are split in half with two eyes and half the mouth and then two eyes and half the mouth. But they're not flesh. They're made out of some kind of ectoplasm in that weird form. They see the cocoon and they charge towards it. And they look at you and one of them points at you and screams. And the scream actually like makes you nauseous and knocks you back right out of the shadow world and into the real world. Just in time to see Joffrey sit up gasping for air and spitting blood out. Right after his, uh, any, any broken bones would have, like, cracked back into place. Spit out the bit of pinky. Yes. That was placed uh, in my mouth. You're still, dam- you're still, you're still at five damage, but it's all bashing down. You're not unconscious. 
instead of dropping to four lethal and I'm turning it all bashing, but you're still full, which means you can't even move. You need to sit there and gasp. You know, God, it hurts. Uh, could I cast a mind spell to make my mind ignore the pain? Or actually, is it a too pretty much basic pain? effect. Actually, a pretty basic effect for a time. Well, you know, how much mind do you have? I have mind three. Oh yeah, go ahead and roll uh, stamina plus meditation. Oh, I did this on Sunday. Ah. Yep. Right, well, uh, difficulty of six standard. Two successes. Yes. So you're still taking the penalties should something terrible happen, but you're not experiencing it. You separate yourself from it. It's like Dwayne. Can't feel the dead part of his mouth, but he can still bite his lip off. Can't damage himself. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> uh, and that's a perfect time to pause until next week with Joffrey oh. coming back to life. Oh, gasp. How dare you? Mm. Better than the train wreck cliffhanger I really wanted to do. <clears throat> that was intense. That was so good. It was amazing. Wow. It was this an is, intense session. This is <clears throat> addictive. Viewers, thank you for experiencing Chapter 3 of our Victorian Mage story. Still in the link with us. We'll return with Chapter 4 next Tuesday at 9 p.m. right here. Come for the edge of your seat drama. If you enjoyed this show, we're Vorpal Tales and we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures live on Twitch every day of the week at twitch.com slash Vorpal Tales. Link soon in chat. Specific to Mage, every Sunday at 9, we have a Mage cult crossover called White Walls. A Mage the Ascension 20th Anniversary Edition, just like this, but in the modern era, for now. Uh, we also have... <laughs> Scarred lands every Friday. You can go to our website, warbletales.com, to see our calendar for all the other awesome shows we play in other systems. Oh, yes. And right now, uh, Trinity Continuum Aberrant playing dark superheroes on Saturdays in Quantum Nights, run by Dwayne. Don't forget to check out Indiegogo for Victorian Mage. The book is awesome. As you can see, it just passed another stretch goal today. More are coming. You should go check it out. Ever will drop the link or we will sign off. Also, don't forget, it's a Warple Tales anniversary week, so Onyx Ooh. Path is hooking everyone up. Free stuff. Follow Onyx Path. Go to our channel, follow us, twitch.tv slash Tales, and be active in our chat or this one every day of the week. Any day, not every. Of the week this week. And on Friday, you will go in an entry for three potential prizes. Grand prize, Scion 2E bundle, and the two runner-ups get their choice of a story path code book. Awakened extraordinary gentle beings, let the viewers know who you are one more time in the next place this week people can find you with us and not with us. Uh yeah, hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me stolen fires pretty much everywhere. Uh especially uh Twitter and Instagram, and I've also got a Ko-Fi. Uh and you can see me, let's see. I'm off a uh, Plastic Age Place this Wednesday. But uh, I will be back here on Thursday, uh, running a Changeling the Dreaming Chronicle, also set in Victorian London. Uh, turns out that the uh, technocracy is meeting at uh, this random manor called Bletchley Park. Changelings are gonna crash it. That'll be fun. Uh, also watch last week's episode to see what happened with the Queen. Yes, yes, last week they got to speak with uh, uh, Her Majesty Queen Victoria. It was a lot of fun playing that. Uh, yeah, and then Sunday I'm going to be in White Walls, and I'm super excited for that one, too. Cool. That's all my stuff. <laughs> I'm at Space Lord PJs. You can catch me tomorrow night running Tales from the Loop. It will be a first session, session zero, actually. We'll be creating characters, have a small adventure. It'll be great. It'll be awesome. Looking forward to it. Cool game. You should come check it out. Yeah, I'm excited. Hey everybody, I have been Ethan, and I will now shapeshift back into Ever, whose pronouns are they, them, and... <laughs> oh, look at that. Perfect timing for Ever this time. Yeah, I... I yeah. So, 
I love watching my team dance. It's so much fun. So, um, yeah, you can find me on the internet as Changeling Ever. You can find me on Etsy as Neat and Co. Designs, as in Hey Ever. That's a really neat song that your DM has picked out for this game ending. And you will find me tomorrow playing Tales from the Loop, which is going to be rad. Groovy? I mean, they still use 70s. Radly slang, Groovy. Little... Rad. It would have been rad. They Audacious, did. even. Mm, that would have been like the 90s, maybe. Uh, yeah, 80s, it would have been rad. Maybe these middle schoolers it. coined it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Remember the California's the trendsetter. <clears throat> More California facts? Okay. Um, I believe I'm next. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve. Um, I have been playing uh, Sir Arthur. Um, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and next time you can see me is tomorrow at Global Tales, playing in said Tales from the Loop, being an absolute little brat. Are you part of the club? I'm in the goddamn club, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at True Kisama. You can find me on Thursdays in a chilling tale in Black Void as Old Man Madara. And it is me, Dwayne, the one and only spicy cruciferous vegetable. Uh, the next time that you will see me will be running said Black Void game on Thursday. And I'm Elder Jekos Online. I'm here on Vorpal Tales a lot. I'll call out special attention though to Saturday where you can go and come watch us play superheroes Onyx Path style in Average. And now, for our ride or die viewers, it's vote time. Audience, if you're still around, you can vote for your favorite player this session. If you vote for them, they get a free point of quintessence to use in the next session. Cast, your votes for each other is as usual free willpower. Cast, oh. begin. Oh, I, I'm so torn. This was so cool. Uh, I'm giving mine to Key because just your roleplay when you came out of the the time travel and uh, you know trying to communicate, not really knowing like what's going on. Uh, it was really cool. Just your body language and the way you spoke, it was amazing. Thank you. Body language beat drop. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to give my vote to Steve for being the whitest, most stodgiest British dude just ever. Like, <laughs> I just want to slap your character. It's just, yeah. <laughs> but oh. Murdoch, <laughs> you bastard. It's even, better when you, it's even better when you picture him as an old Pierce Brosnan doing it with the beard and the angry face. Right, it's kind of there and it's just like, Oh god, I just hate you so much. <laughs> no. It's really hard. It's always hard. God dang it. I'm I'm gonna have to give it to Dwayne for number one, opening with that cabbage patch thing. <laughs> number two, ending with the spicy vegetable and all the in-between bits of your life magic were amazing. Your shape-shifting and your pinky finger. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Life begets life. <laughs> Let's get that on a shirt. Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, I was... Five seconds ago, I was going to vote for Key for the absolute amazing um, everything, honestly. Um, however, um, I did remember that the only person who I believe outright killed a vampire on his own with no help tonight and was um, Murdoch. So Murdoch, take my goddamn vote, you vampire-killing bastard. <sighs> I was actually going to apologize to Murdoch for the lack of screen time, but then I remembered that's because he just super murdered a boss. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I mean, I just sit in here on mute for the rest of the night and just like, I'm done. I'm good. I'm out. 
I might have a sandwich, I guess. <laughs> if I could walk, if I wasn't producing, I would have walked away and made a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> not, not without dramatically dropping something. Right. Or a cat. I shouldn't say. My that. vote would have to go to Murdoch as well. More as an apology for not being able to let you kill a vampire a second time. Mm. Uh, I mean, yeah. in his head, oh. he did it twice, so... I think we're no, good. is that right? Yeah. In case Machete isn't here, I think they meant Dwayne this when you said when they said Doctor, but I'm not sure. If you're uh, still here, Machete. Do you, yeah. Did you mean the Doctor? Or yeah, the, 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 the timing made it <laughs> made of kimchi. Sound. Yeah, the 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 timing made it sound like it was for uh, Joffrey or or Steve. Unsure. Too many titles. Doctor, doctor, doctor. This is doctor, why doctor. we have. Is he going to make it doctor? I don't know, doctor. Yes, for doctor. Yeah. Thank, uh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. He meant kimchi. Kimchi. Thank you, Kimchi is doctor. Joffrey is professor. I am sir. I'm yeah. professor. Who? <laughs> Who's left to uh, vote? Uh, Space me. dice also get a vote. Uh, yes, that's you. I'll take it. <laughs> I am going to vote for Maisie because oh, in wizarding school or mage school, the first thing they taught us was wards. I totally forgot about that shit. So <laughs> good thing that you did. <laughs> awesome. Excellent being excellent to each other. Can and I just want to yes. say thank you. Uh, yes. I did vote. Yes. yes. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's voting in chat. This yes. is awesome. Love you guys putting in. Yes. Your thoughts and opinions and we appreciate it thank you all for hanging out when you guys participate it's more awesome yes and we'd like to thank you all once again for sharing this story with us for now until we return next week you're gonna have to be bricky and avoid the morphs because we promise our giggle mugs will be back next tuesday and the good evening to you all <laughs> <laughs>